Welcome back, volleyball fans. We are here for the fifth and final match of Saturday, day two of NVA Event 2021. We are about to get the uh, LA Blaze and Ontario Matadors underway, but first we're going to hear a little bit more from sideline reporter Victoria Dennis. Victoria, take it away. Thanks, Nick. Coach Mark with the Matadors. Coming into the last game of the day here this evening against LA Blaze, LA Blaze has some strong Puerto Rican national team members. How do you plan to stop them this match? Well, we were talking about uh, getting our blocks up there, making sure we stay true, reading, uh, trying to get them out of system first so we don't have to worry about them offensively. That's a big plus for us if we can get them out of system. And then obviously offensively, we want to put ourselves in system to kind of throw them off. Absolutely. And defense wins championships at the end of the day, right? So looking to make those big defensive plays. What else are you looking forward to this match? We're actually looking for some big play out of Molero. Uh, yesterday, I think he didn't have a, a strong game as he could. So today is going to be a, kind of a revenge match for him, get him back into the game, get him hustling out there. There you go. All cylinders firing. Absolutely. Thank you. Back to you, Nick. Thanks so much. And Matt, we got a chance to talk about that a little bit earlier. Sometimes the best way to get someone out of system, you know, it's not having to do with, or I guess to stop big hitters, isn't to put up a bigger block. It's to get them out of system from the service line. So hearing that approach coming in from the Matadors right off the bat, I think it's a great way to approach this match. Yeah, great strategy by the Matadors coach, obviously emphasizing strong service game. And then on their own side, their serve reception, right, so that they can run their offense try to get the other team's offense sort of on the rocks a little bit early on in this match. Yeah, so a little quick breakdown to revisit where we left these teams last season. Uh, LA Blaze had a tough November and uh, they didn't quite get the result they were looking for. They've added a couple uh, couple new members. We saw Travis O'Gorman from the George Mason University had a fantastic first showing. Um, some returners as well. We've seen Charles Belvin who was previously coming off the bench is now not only the starting opposite, he's also the floor captain for the LA Blaze. Well-deserved, well-earned, and he's had a great weekend thus far. They were able to take a first win in five sets yesterday morning, and uh, now looking over at the Matadors. So the Matadors have uh, redone their roster a bit. They uh, previously had a quite a quite a heavy Puerto Rican influence. We saw some of those yep. big names yep. like uh, Encarnacion out there, and they won't be returning. Also, we saw Jair Santiago wearing the teal of the OC Stunners yep. this morning. So yep. um, the big adjustment we're going to see here is, you know, we're seeing Vanderbeek still on the right side. Number 17 is going to be an absolute powerhouse. He was a big delivery system for them yesterday. Yeah, definitely. We're going to see uh, Jose Molero coming back wearing that off-color jersey in the libero and the little flashy libero that he is. He had a great event in November, yep. had a good day here yesterday, and definitely someone to uh, keep an eye on. Also, we're seeing Jesus Serrano is one of the craftiest, most offensive setters we've got here in the league. A little bit undersized, but cranks his jump serve. Always ready to take a swing if, uh, depending on how the system is developing, ready to dump and uh, does well for himself. So a couple activations yesterday afternoon. Also from number 15, Martin Patrice. I'll be curious to see how that develops, especially with such a dominant middle from the L.A. Blaze in both uh, Jonathan Rodriguez as well as Pedro Nieves. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to throw that in there. I'm excited to see the middles match up between these two teams because the Blaze have got some very well-established middle blockers with good size, high jumpers, really a lot of range. I'm going to question their 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 um, connection, though, with their setter mm -hmm. in bugs and see how they can you kind know, of run their offense that way because I haven't seen that yet. And for the Matadors, how they're going to plan on stopping them. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of give and take here in terms of uh, what one team does well is complemented by what the other teams do well. So it's going to definitely be a great match, and this is going to be a fun one. This is two of the SoCal teams here. We're in the Ontario's home gym. So Matador is defending the home court here, and, uh, you know, both of the this match is really going to be an important one for these guys in terms of, I think, where their skill set matches them up as some of those top middle-tier teams. Getting this win is really going to be important for their overall season standings. Yeah, you know, there's there's going to be key matchups, you know, every weekend that we have an event, okay, and this is definitely going to be one of them. What, for bragging rights, first of all, but obviously for rankings within the conferences, you mm -hmm. know, as we work our way through the season to make sure that teams are positioning themselves to be playing at, at their peak at the right time of the year, which is going to be going into the championship event, right? But this is going to be a good tester, you know, almost like a litmus test to see where both teams yeah. stand what they need to work on, what they need to kind of revamp a little bit, and get some good information on the teams that they're going to see, you know, throughout yeah. the season as well. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes. We're going to see uh, probably the, the Serrano brother duo here. They uh, Not only are they 
is uh, Jesus Serrano, the setter, but also Carlos Serrano on the outside yesterday. Also, one of the new guys to keep an eye on is, uh, it was number 12, Mauro Isaac. This guy's an explosive guy, fan favorite for the uh, Matadors. Definitely out here to deliver. So someone to keep an eye on. Also, uh, a shout out to Brett Massetti. There's an R on that roster. Yesterday, uh, I was saying Masserti, and <laughs> <laughs> he made sure I knew that it's uh, Massetti, so we'll get that one right for him tonight. Nice job. A local Hope International guy, probably gonna see him out on the court as well. Thanks for clarifying that, Nick. Yep, sometimes, uh, you know, we do our best, and uh, whether it's the information provided to us or just the tongue in our mouth, we just can't, <laughs> you know, we do our best out here, but this is going to be a big match. And uh, right now, looking on the side of L.A. Blaze, we're looking at pretty much the same roster as we saw yesterday. So that's going to be Bugs as the setter. Number 91 is Jordan Wally in their 0-2 slot with Travis O'Gorman in the one from George Mason University. Pedro Nieves, number six. And uh, Jonathan Rodriguez in the middle. They're actually going to swap out here, Charles Belvin, and we're going to see um, Joe Cuevas, number 15, playing the right side with Ricky Massanet wearing number 11. Joe Cuevas played a little bit of the third set yesterday after Blaze was up 2-0. He was not having the best afternoon, so maybe they're just trying to get him back in with the starting lineup, see if they can get a little bit of, uh, you know, some rhythm going for him, just kind of help him find his way. Yeah, so yeah. that's a good look. And on the side of the Matadors, we're going to see uh, Jacob Vanderbeek on the right side, number 17. Jose Molero, number 11, is the libero. We're going to see uh, Jesus Serrano taking the hands here, followed up by his brother on the outside, number 13, Carlos Serrano. Then uh, I do believe, yep, that is Mauro Isaac is going to be taking up that second outside hitter spot. Martin Patrice in the middle, number 15. And there's going to be a small adjustment here. So we did see uh, one small adjustment they made in the later half of the Stingers yesterday as they swapped, in fact, off of Brett Massetti. And they went over to number eight. That's Gilberto Sanchez, who opened up a couple huge offensive swings was uh, definitely trying to break some floorboards with him, and it was a really welcome, energetic change for them. So glad to see that he's getting a nod here today. They're appreciating what he was able to get done, maybe make some changes in uh, the look of that team. So got a little uh, substitution before we even start here, and that's going to be uh, Zuniga coming in as a setter for Jesus Serrano, maybe an accidental uh, adjustment on their submitted lineup. The way, uh, once you've submitted your lineup, the only way to make adjustments is through substitution. So maybe that was just a coaching typo out of habit or something like that. Yeah, or maybe uh, just a small little typo, like we said, but you've got to make the sub based on the rules, and it that's is one is. less sub for them in the first set. So Also kind of limiting that. in terms of the one in, one out. So uh, yeah, kind of can limit some options. It's going to remove the ability to do a double sub. Yep. All right, Bugs is going to start us off here with a jump serve. Sends that one deep. Uh, high in the middle of the court. And it goes to Morrow on the outside. One-handed dig from O'Gorman. Wally gets this swing, goes a chop. Mulero tries to track it down. Picked up by Serrano. Vanderbeek sends it back to reset. Massanet picks it up. And a huge swing out of the middle from number 14, Rodriguez. Rodriguez is a super athletic kid out of Puerto Rico. You, uh, high flyer, jumps really high, has got great range. Really a strong, quick attacking middle blocker for the LA Blaze. He's on the Puerto Rican national team, I'm pretty sure. Both he and uh, Nieves have e are either currently on it or have had stints on that. So mm -hmm. definitely experience there and a great first rally. Good control here by Morrow. And Petrius gets connection right away there with the uh, quick subbing Zuniga. Nice little traded point, one to one. Like to see the early action in the middle. Okay, I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit. We've seen it throughout the day, but you know, setting the middle early and often, establishing that connection and the quick attack is always a great, you know, starting strategy for both of these squads. Ricky Massanet in system, Bick over the top from O'Gorman, reset and put back over. Goes to the backside. Jordan Wally takes that deep swing, tries to find some hands and doesn't, and that's going to be a long swing for the side of the Matadors. Just a little misfire there by O'Gorman out of the Bic in that first option uh, set that Bugs gave him. He's a newer player to the LA Blaze squad. Excited to see what he does after his time at Long Beach City College and George Mason University. There's another high swing, and that was very, very similar to the errors we were seeing yesterday. Yeah, I agree with you. That is very similar to what we were seeing. And, uh, you know, 
you got to find court if you want to score points, and if you hit it out, it's an advantage to the other team. So we're going to see 3-1 here on the side of the Matadors. O'Gorman is the serving target here. Set to jump. There's the court we're looking for. Wow. Wow. Where was the middle blocker on that play for the Matadors? He decided to not block, and he paid the price. That's for sure. Huge hole in the middle of the court, and uh, Jose Molero left hung out to dry in the back row there. Big swing from Cuevas. Wally hits a nice hybrid, finds it there. Good pass by Molero. And you talk about high flyers. That's yeah. another great, great approach there from Mauro Isaac. Yeah, that was a big boy hit, big boy against a big boy block. And uh, Isaac comes out with uh, the advantage on that one, and that's going to be exciting to watch throughout this match. Absolutely, and we uh, keep an eye on that serve from Jordan Wally as well. That hybrid put some teams in trouble so far as well. Good pass from Wally back to the middle. Rodriguez blocked back into his face. You asked where the middle was. Martin Patrice says, I'm right here. Yeah, right back into Rodriguez's grill on that block. And uh, that one might sting a little bit, but it just depends action. how hard do you hit it because oh, <laughs> it's coming back. Yeah, you see, he's got some tears in the eye there. I've seen a couple of stars maybe. Someone's just chopping onions. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Massanet finds it off the ceiling. Joe Cuevas tries to reset. Oh, no, he gets that one off, tool off the uh, high hands there. Yeah, little nice control chip. Nice adjustment by Bugs. The setter, that ball kind of came off with a little English off that, you know, yeah. girder up there, and he was able to adjust and put up a hittable set. Almost digging it off the ceiling there. Yeah. Jordan Wally had some experience playing over in England. They've been using really as a defensive uh, outside, really slotting into the true 0-2 for them. And there's Rodriguez attacking that 5-6 seam. Jose Molero goes to his left, but Serrano not able to, uh, you know, open that line of communication. Great serve by Jonathan Rodriguez. I mean, I remember in November in Salt Lake City, he really had a hard time with his jump serve while we were there at that event. So to see him come out of the gates, the first serve of this match, get a clean ace, that's promising for the Blaze. Goes right back, targets Serrano once again. Serrano's the only option, oh. and able to find Jonathan Rodriguez as that ball goes out. I'm excited to see Massanet play tonight. It's been since November. I saw him play when we were in Salt Lake City when he was, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's still the youngest guy on the team, but he was younger then, and he definitely uh, hasn't put on any muscle since we were in Salt Lake City. Nope. But uh, he's a lights-out passer, great defender, and he's not afraid to hit the ground for the ball. Pedro Nieves losing his height after even uh, missing that attempt. Misses the attempt, lands on the ground, and still able to tip it over there. <laughs> Victoria, what are you seeing? Victoria's need to play good defense if they're going to beat L.A. Blaze here. Blaze, they're looking to block line and force the Matadors to swing angle. They also are looking to make better setter-hitter connections. And if they're not making that connection, they need to keep the ball in play and rely on their defense. Nick, back to you. Thanks so much. It'll be definitely an interesting one to track if you uh, follow the hitting patterns there of their right side, Jacob Vanderbeek. If you give him line, he's going to hit it every time. And yeah. if you don't give him line, he'll hit it off your hands. So that's that's his go-to. Vanderbeek's got great vision, you know, on his attack lines. He's a high flyer. He's got a strong arm. And look for him to carry a lot of the offensive load. And don't give him any advantages because he'll expose them for sure. High set out to the outside. And... Nice dig there by Vanderbeek. Malero's going to lay that one up for Serrano. Tip over the top. Now it goes outside, and there's the high-flying O'Gorman showing that four-to-four four swing. Great swing line by O'Gorman. He goes hard into the cross court. He saw that alley wide open. He took full advantage of it, and uh, he's an explosive player as well. So we're going to see some good volleyball here tonight. 7-6 seven, six teams, 6-7, six, sorry. Uh, teams definitely trading blows here. An, expect, an explosive jump server. There it is. One of the few guys to put Molero out of, out of uh, you know, out of system. And it may not be an ace in the books, but no, mine is, it might as well be. It might as well be. It's as good as an ace. I mean, that was uh, some good heat. Molero just kind of in his, you know, cool, nonchalant type of way. Turned up with a not great pass, and they paid the price.
Waffles that one a bit, not quite the contact he's looking for, and that's gonna take us into the first technical timeout. Yeah, not too sure what the uh, story was with that one, but uh, maybe a bad toss, definitely a bad contact, but uh, you know, well, Gorman probably wants that one back for sure. I would have liked to have seen him just go right back to Malero, you know, and test him again. Yep. But I mean, that's that's kind of what you see when guys are looking uh, for a way to challenge those, uh, you know, challenge a serve receive like that. Sometimes you just got to pull the trigger and, you know, you might be telling your guys, hey, I need to serve this guy. Those kind of jump serves. Sometimes it's just a, hey, put that ball on the court and not quite able to do so there. Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, you put a great serve on a guy and it's, you get almost basically an ace, you know, and then to follow it right back up with sort of a miss hit error, it's like, it's easy to criticize once again because we're here watching, but like just, you know, chip it in, put it on the guy again, you know? Yep. Don't try to change your target. You just scored a point off the guy and, you know, test him another time and see how he reacts instead of just trying to change up what just got you a point and missing your serve. Yeah, and we, you know, we heard a lot of uh, kind of that Matador's approach to how this game was going to play from their coach before the game, but a little interesting nod to the coach of the LA Blaze. Their coach is Eddie Zhou, who is actually a, I believe he's about six foot ten setter from the Chinese national team, who is now uh, an LA resident himself. He's worked with the NBA for a long time, and he's uh, the big man running the show over here. So he definitely knows his stuff, shows some creative subs and ways for these guys to get points. So something to keep an eye on for sure. And there's the dump coming over. Once again, Jordan Wally is really having a solid showing. You talked this morning about wanting your first, second, third pass to really be your best of the match. Yeah. Well, the first two have been perfect threes, so yep. Yep. he's in a he's in a good spot right now. And if you're if you're Bugs, you love having that and, back there. And it's a promising sign for his team when he passes well, obviously, and gets Bugs in rhythm offensively. Yevs now with the float, aggressive float catches Molero with an overpass, a second overpass. It's reset. Rodriguez is going to push down to the sideline, and that's a very unforced error. Not too sure what uh, the thought process was with the, the short set over, but uh, instead of just back to the corner. So I'm a, I'm a firm believer that most free balls should be going to the left side of the court for one of two reasons. One, make the opposite pass or take the setter out. Uh, right side of the court is going to be taken over by the libero, so just put it in, but there's no reason to miss a free ball like that. Yeah. Hits the ceiling, O'Gorman tracks it. Uh, he was already committed to beyond the girder, so he needed some extra help, and uh, Blaze not quite ready to track that one off the ceiling. Yeah, once again, it's sort of an unfamiliar bounce for most of these teams. When the ball goes up there, they don't quite know where it's gonna come back, and uh, Wally was just sort of watching that one fall to the floor. We're now gonna see Gilberto Sanchez hitting his big jump serve, puts a lot of pace on that, just out, misses the sideline. Ricky Massanet there puts his right foot on the line, feeling very confident. Yeah, he followed it all the way through there and uh, got lucky it didn't tick the line on the way out, but point goes to the blaze. We're going to see that jump serve once again from Bugs. Loves going right down the line, attacking the five or five six seam. And there it is. Bump set out from Patrice. Actually, a good ball there. O'Gorman gets a touch, and that one's going to go long. Well done by, uh, I was a little nervous there when Patrice stepped in to bump set that one over his head, but gets a great delivery there from Mauro Isaac to step in, take a big rip into the angle. Zuniga now at the float to O'Gorman's hands. Follow-up goes outside, a little uh, little bit of a Kong swing over his head there from Joe Cuevas, and he's able to find his second kill of the game. Yeah, sort of an unorthodox swing right there by him. It kind of a, has a little hitch in his giddy-up as he comes yep. through, right? But uh, it was effective, and so score the point to the Blaze. Now 10 serving 11. Jordan Wally, this is that uh, hybrid I was talking about. No spin on the toss, put some top spin on it, a little English. Nice pass by Mulero. Great dig by Wally. We're in system to O'Gorman, and he finds that angle swing, and that is a heck of a transition there yeah. on the back of Jordan Wally, number 91. Yeah, nice swing by O'Gorman. You know, he, he, he's actually he's kind of sneaky, jumpy, athletic, and he's got some good heat on his arm behind the ball. So it doesn't look physically imposing, but he's got some good gas in that hitting attack. Absolutely, and there's, you know, that's that's the risky run with that uh, with that tough Hybrids are very high risk, high reward a lot of the time, um, but he puts a lot of time on it and uh, 
gets one real point at least. So yeah. in a back and forth, take what you can get. Mauro Isaac now also been hitting at jump serve phenomenally. And you jinxed him. That's what I do. Rodriguez found an ace in his last uh, service attempts. He's going to miss that one wide. Just not quite finding the contact he's yeah, looking for. I'd like to see him kind of get like a nice 75, 80% swing in, right, for serve, see if they can get a point out of it, and then go back, you know, go turn it up a little bit, 85, 90%, see if he can get that one in, you know, kind of create some sort of a serving pattern to, uh, you know, get him going. Yeah, that's a ser short serve. And there's the, there's the inside lob set that, uh, you know, you're trying to get some out, some out of system looks there from Patrice. It's a good look, but Ricky Massonet read that one a mile away, all over. It puts them right back in system, and they are ready for that on the side of LA Blaze. O'Gorman, full commit on that lob. Yeah, the Matadors are really going to have to uh, pay attention to where O'Gorman goes offensively and make the adjustments with their block and defense. Cuevas Ooh. just barely long. Wow, that one was close. Vanderbeek, another one of those servers that's got a variety of different serves in his repertoire. But there's a two-man serve receive developing over on the side of Blaze. O'Gorman stepped back in there. Wally was looking for ways to minimize the seam. O'Gorman being picked on quite a bit so far today as well as last night. Um, a lot of teams, also when he was at George Mason, the way they try to handle his offensive arm is they target him in serve receive. And so, yeah. you know, with a great passer like Ricky Massonette back there and uh, Jordan Wally, they're trying to minimize the amount of work he's got to do before he can hit. Sure, of course, you know, serving West trying to take him out of his, appro uh, his approach line, you know, as he gets ready to hit after passing. Yep. But a few too many service errors right now by the Blaze. And uh, or else I think they'd be up by a few more points here. Uh, midway through this first set. Then again, it speaks to the pressure that both these teams feel they've got to put on because the serve receive has been good thus far. Wally with another perfect pass. And Wally gets his. Another explosive swing from the outsides. And LA Blaze, uh, we saw them using Pablo Guzman back in Salt Lake City, and he's been unable to return, I think, maybe for just this event or potentially the season. He's doing some training for the Puerto Rican Beach National Team, actually. Oh, okay. However, he is uh, replaced by his younger brother, number two, Francisco Guzman, on the roster. Gotcha. That one's in. That's going to be an ace. Pedro Nieves finds the corner that he's looking for, and that's going to take us to a 16-15 technical timeout. Yeah, that's basically two aces off of uh, Malero on the Matadors, and that's not something we're used to seeing because he's been, you know, pretty much referred to as sort of a rock back there as a passer. Yeah. You know, so pretty surprised by that. And, I mean, I thought, you know, it was interesting to hear the coach's take before the beginning of that match that he w he thought that Jose could have done more last night. They were looking for a little bit more, and I, I thought he had a good game last night. Of course, he's had some plays that really just are phenomenal. So he goes kind of above and beyond with some of his defense. Yeah. But getting aced is not something that we see frequently and yeah. that's that's been two so far and it's again i mean it is still early in this match and you know you can expect to see him kind of fix that on his side maybe he's just sort of trying to get calibrated or you know figure out the lighting in here or, or what the other team's doing with their serves you know i'm sure he knows what these guys are going to do towards him towards serving so he should be you know ready for it but again yeah kind of rare to see two aces in, in one set against malera Absolutely, and I think this is also, I'm just, well, I'm keeping an eye on the interactions going on, and this is what I love to see the coach with Eddie Joe, you know, uh, I would say Bugs in terms of the, the level of play that most of these guys have seen. Center Bugs is uh, the one that has seen the, he has not seen the highest level of play compared to every other guy right now on that roster, but it's amazing to have a coach that's played for a national team running, you know, your squad, so anything that he knows, he can just inject directly into Bugs and make sure it's reflected on the court. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, great to have, you know, a head coach with some international volleyball experience because he'll be able to rely on that and pass that knowledge on. There's an uncharacteristic pass once again. It's going to be a step close there from Vanderbeek, forcing Nieves to pass. Tight ball from Wally, and he gets a nice reset. Now Nieves is going to dish that one to the outside. Oh Little miscommunication between Bugs and Wally. Who's going to swing? Vanderbeek on the backside. Dug by Joe Cuevas, bounces around on the ceiling. Reset from Bugs. 
Step close from Yevs. Swings that one along. That was chaotic. There was a couple good swings, but you know, when you're out of system like that, that's where communication really has to shine through. Yeah, definitely. You know, Bugs kind of uh, got a little excited with an opportunity to take a swing there. He <laughs> probably should have just gotten out of the way and let his outside hitter do it. But um, yeah, you know, rattled around on the roof. I like that aggressive swing by Nieves, but just missed the end line by a foot or so. Gilberto Sanchez once again hits that with a lot of pace. There's an ace for the guy. Once again, as a middle two, he's really finding some different ways to get involved. Aggressive serving is always a great way to impact the game. Rattle the guys a little bit, make sure they're, uh, you know, taking care of their serve receive. Yeah, the home team right now feeling a little momentum on their side with a good ace right there and uh, looking to repeat on that same point scoring opportunity. Another great serve, but strong hands by Wally and Jonathan Rodriguez opens that back up to zone one. Jordan Wally, four for four perfect passes. Some strong mittens right there. He catches that ball, tosses it right to the hands of uh, the setter Bugs. Yeah, and I like that connection between Bugs and Rodriguez as well. Yeah, you wanted to see it develop. You know, we, we didn't see a lot of great connection with them last season, and it wasn't Bugs setting at the time, but, you know, working well so far. Yep. Wow. Morrow Isaac with a huge cut into the angle. What a swing. As this game develops, we're going to hear a little bit more from Victoria. Victoria, what do you got? Thanks, Nick. Matador's playing insane defense right now. L LA Blaze needs to continue to spread their offense, utilize Jonathan, number 14, in the middle, as well as number 15 on the outside. Nick, back to you. Thanks so much. And a lot of that really is attributed to some service pressure. There's that low seam swing, and there's a timeout from Coach Eddie Joe. Yeah, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of really low seam swings, like you're talking about it, throughout the day. These guys really need to take a better look at where they're hitting the ball. Aim for the back corner, aim for the inline. Look, a kill is a kill as long as the ball finds the court, right? right. It doesn't have to be flashy every single time, right? It, be effective. And dropping your arm and trying to hit the ball straight down might look flashy, but it's not always effective. And so, you know, you see some blocks and unfortunately right. points to the other team. And one of the things that I want to see most is if that set's not there, that's okay. But you need to go low or, or sorry, you need to go high hands, recycle, flick it off, do a little 30%, what we call a reset. Yep. Give yourself a chance for your libero sitting right behind you, cover you up reset the play, get right back in system. And very frequently, if you're doing it right, you might even be able to run a middle and transition out of that because it's an easy ball coming off that block. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Nick. So far, we've seen Zuniga doing a pretty good job running this offense for the Matadors. Ricky Massanet gets a uh, ball that goes to the outside. Wally step close. Molero puts them back in system. Vanderbeek going one on one, high hands. He's able to use Joe Cuevas there and O'Gorman not able to lay out for that touch in the back row. Well, able to lay out, certainly not able to make the connection. Just laid out a touch late because the ball was already down, but uh, you know, appreciate the effort. Just need to get a little better control touch on that block for Blaze as uh, Vanderbeek gets credit for that kill. Good pass from Wally over the shoulder of Bugs. And there's Joe Cuevas off the chest of Serrano, very controlled. Vanderbeek's gonna send that into Massanet. And there's the uh, big swing off of, wow. we're good? <laughs> all right, we're good. That dodged all of our equipment over here. No game ball touch required in the commentator booth. That's a huge swing from uh, Joe Cuevas there using that late block from the Matadors. Wally now preps, oh, he goes off the hybrid, goes to the jump serve. Good pass from Serrano, goes back to the middle, and that's Patrice, there's that middle interaction once again. I love when we want to see it develop and hope that it turns into something. And right now, middles are trading kills. Rodriguez, Nieves, you know, lots going on from the side of the Blaze, as well as Patrice on the side of the Matadors. Yeah, I like to see the emotion and the fire from the Matadors side right now, sort of negating the Blaze's start and their kind of big plays. You're going to see a lot of that back and forth tonight. And there's another ace, Mauro Isaac. Both of these teams more than ready and more than happy to pull the trigger and you know we were seeing their serves not quite match the errors from the get-go but now everyone's starting to connect on both sides and a lot of pressure on yeah, the server some seat. high level serving all of a sudden every both teams have leveled up their serving and we're seeing that from the matadors going on a nice run here especially at this point of the match or this point of the game to get to 22 points you know and uh if they can maintain it and carry it through the rest of this way is going to be a you know a good sight to see 
and hopefully they can continue to do that. Yeah, and I wanna, I wanna check back in about five or six points ago, we got that little nugget from Victoria saying, hey, check out the Matadors defense. Right there we see Serrano throwing his chest out, gets not only a great dig, but puts them right back that they can run Vanderbeek on the right side. Matadors can really do no wrong, it feels like right now, so they gotta try to keep that, uh, that momentum going. Morrow tries to find a good connection out of the timeout, bounces the tape, Massanet with a pass. Cuevas with the big swing, a little bit uh, unsure what Serrano's blocking move happened there. Looked like some misconnect there. We're gonna see Nick Liz Dennis coming in now as a serving substitution for Jonathan Rodriguez. I am gonna make sure we highlight this real quick. Nick Liz Dennis is the first in the gym and the last out for LA Blaze every single week. He commits 45 minutes to serving every practice and plays a lot of libero in the gym. A great server, hopefully we see that work for him here. And there it is, the <laughs> net bounce works for him, but I'm you glad that it. he heard me coming in with that because <laughs> you, you my guy puts in a ton of effort. And he does a great job of isolating the front row outside with a jump serve down the line. So I would expect that Serrano is his target here. Yeah, nicely uh, timed floor wipe here to kind of try to give a little mini icing to uh, the server. Liz Dennis regularly will uh, be the last one. Sometimes we're training till 11.30 at night, and so some guy's gotta go out and he'll hop on any SoCal team he can. Everyone happy to throw him in there to be a DS, a serving sub, whatever it takes. Cool. He just wants a chance to play. This goes to show, as much as you play, play as much as you can, no matter what the position, and just continue right to get better. Goes to the outside, Serrano tips over the top, picked up by Bugs, and Liz Dennis airs out a great pass. O'Gorman not quite able to connect, but I really want to say is uh, I've been so critical of so many serving substitutions that happen in the league. The guys come off cold. They're not ready. They're not dialed in, and they make a service error. Couldn't be further from the truth with Liz Dennis there. Two great serves, a yeah. nice bump set to the outside, and that's what you want to see. It's a good impact from a player off the bench to uh, contribute something into this game for the Blaze. Petris loves this short serve, opts out for the long, a little bit deeper there. Wally cannot be taken out of service even. Matadors now going for the uh, Bic route. Little misconnection. Speaking of misconnections, that's gonna be a little bit of a miss there. While we're seeing Rodriguez connecting well with Bugs, Nieves is not quite there. Yeah, Nieves is, uh, can't quite jump as high as Rodriguez. I mean, I know he's a very established and well-known player and he's been playing at a high level for a very long time. He just doesn't jump as high as Rodriguez and so there's a little misconnect between Bugs and it's set point to the Matadors. O'Gorman with a good pass. Bugs goes backside to Joe Cuevas. That's dug by Serrano with a little gator there. And now the other Serrano is going right back to it. That's a confident swing. And we are seeing both teams firing on all cylinders. Wow. That was a quick turnaround there. It was a little flat to begin with for both teams. And uh, the Matadors really turned it on once they got to about the 16 technical timeout. They really turned it on. And really some pressure from the inline gave them a nice cushion. And created a couple of points there and their, their momentum they created and the emotion that they're showing is really gonna be hard to overcome, I think, for the Blaze. I got one word for you, Belvin. Okay, well, I mean, I did see Coach talking to, you know, Belvin over there and maybe he's telling him to get going and start that engine up a little bit, but, uh, you know, if you need him, why didn't you start him? So what's the story with that? So I think the take is right there, you know, I, I keep saying it all day, figure out what your limits are. Joe didn't have his best day yesterday, but you want to keep a guy like that dialed in. You know, he's an important part of the team. Charles has been playing out of his mind. And so I think right now you put the starters in and the thought process, you get Joe on the court. Let Joe kind of settle in, find his rhythm with those guys. He's coming off some injuries in the off season. He's been doing a lot of rehab. And so I think they're just trying to kind of rebuild that rapport with him, with the team, things like that. Now. Charles Belvin, you can plug and chug. This guy will walk into an open gym five nights a week. He's cold, but he's ready to go. And I think that, uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to see him right now, but I don't think Blaze is wanting to drop another set. So I would not be surprised to bring that emotional and that, uh, you know, that much of an offensive weapon to the court right now is a, uh, I, I think that's the answer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you got the guys on the sideline. If you can make, it, make a difference, put them in, see what he can do. And if it doesn't work, just make the switch back. Yep. Right. Again, I'm not I'm not Eddie Joe, so that's his call, not mine. But that is that is my take on this situation. And anyone that was uh, checking it out back in November, Charles Belvin had some of the most uh, insane offensive swings that we have seen. Yeah. 
That's being a natural sure. lefty really put him in some uh, super high flyer. Yeah. Right, makes some great, amazing plays. Super emotional, right? So he brought his team up with him. He basically put the whole team on his back and carried him through yep. a lot of that tournament in, in Salt Lake City. And, uh, you know, I would like to see him play tonight for sure because I want to see a great match here. I'm sure the people at home want to see a great match as well. Uh, Matadors, you know, strike first blood there by winning set number one. <laughs> Somewhat convincingly, I mean, a six-point victory. And, uh, you know, the pressure's now on the blaze to see how they respond. And I want to talk about emotion a little bit for a moment, not just because uh, I think sometimes the, the word can have a negative connotation or a downside in the sport. You know, we saw the Stunners were a very emotional team earlier today. But now you look at Belvin. Belvin's the guy that knows how to lift up his teammates, help them laugh off their mistakes, but not send himself into a downward spiral. So I think that's positive. Now, when I talk about downward spiral and emotion, I think anyone that was also watching in November, Matadors rings true to that. They were uh, very, very strong early on. They had a, a win here and there, and then they would just kind of implode and not find their way out of some, some matches. I agree with you back then in November, but you said it earlier on in this broadcast that the Matadors team is pretty much a, a different squad than the, what was in uh, Salt Lake City. And, and I think that we are seeing a team that maybe on paper has a little bit less experience in some locations. I think we are seeing a brand new team that has a mental acuity and a volleyball IQ that is going to take this team places and we're seeing it right there, the explosiveness that the Matadors team, they were clicking and firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, Nick. And we do see that switch Charles Belvin in now, everything else the exact same. Matador is going to keep it the exact same as well. And Gilberto Sanchez making a nice little impact as the MB2 over there. Had some pressure from the service line. Yeah, Belvin comes in to play opposite for the Blaze, number 27 in white. Look for him to probably get set right out of the gates, yep. you know because uh, he's going to have to uh, produce for his squad if they want to at least tie this match up and win the second set. Right now, I think that they're going to run a... If you're in system, it's going Rodriguez. If it's anything but, you're going to Belvin. Uh, it's going to be a nice matchup here. Front rows on both sides. There's going to be some good level heads-up volleyball being played. Well, with a good pass. There's the Rodriguez tip over the top. Taken by Zuniga. And now Isaac with a big swing. Good block touch on the side of Blaze. And there's the set to Belvin. High hands. Reset. This is going to be 50-50. It's able to be kept alive. Another set back to him. There's that hard angle headshot into Isaac. And, uh, okay, sorry. So we talked a lot about him between games. On point number one, he goes 4-4 four to four as a lefty. Hits the off blocker <laughs> in the face. I forgot he was a lefty. I mean, he... You want a guy that's going to fire your team up, get the energy going right away off of a game one loss? I can't think of a better way. <laughs> he's a little bit of a, uh, he's definitely the emotional leader on this squad, that's for sure. No doubt about it. But there is Martin Patrice, one of those guys I was highlighting before the match that has really elevated in this offseason. He's been a crucial part and a guy that they really are relying on. Love to see his offensive involvement. I think there was an unlucky bounce off of the ground there for Bugs. Yeah, I think he's just kind of trying to catch his breath here. He uh, got a little rebound off the ground as that ball kind of came in, uh, came in hot. Just trying to gather himself for a second. One of the uh, most unfortunate and least seen parts of men's volleyball. <laughs> Fortunately for us and all the viewers, it's very much unseen. <laughs> Not where I was going with that, but <laughs> true nonetheless. All right, Blaze ready to go back at it, catching their breath. Isaac with a deep swing. Massanet airs it out in the middle of court. O'Gorman step close on a nice big swing using the high hands there of the Matador block. Yeah, that was an, an athletic swing by Gorman. Nice run down by Bugs after that little unfortunate tap of the ball. And uh, or Corman <laughs> swings him out of it to get that point back to the blaze for an early lead in set number two. Rodriguez able to get a nice one there with Malero in system. Patrice low, and they're saying no touch. That's going to be four contacts. What a pass by Malero, though. Over his left shoulder, <laughs> turning around, already looking at the, the door to walk it's, out tonight. It's a roster height say for Malero, five foot four. Is that what it is, or 5'11"? Hard to tell, but uh, he's by far the shortest guy on the court, but uh, he's passing nails, that's for sure. 
The last one might have been out, and Malero might have saved Rodriguez there, but no, no, no such love that time. Five foot four, it says on the roster sheet, just for clarification purposes, in case anyone at home was wondering. He's big in heart. Very much so, very much. That's definitely true. Patrice going to that short, aggressive serve, forces O'Gorman to pass. But if O'Gorman's gonna hand that, handle that pass to Bugs, Nieves and Bugs are gonna make sure the connection is there. Nieves opens that one to the right side. Huge kill. We've been waiting for that one all night. Yeah, I've actually been waiting to see that from Nieves since last November because yeah. I, I, I don't think he was at his best in that tournament, whether it was the connection between him and the setter, but it was a great pass from O'Gorman. And the Aves just absolutely unleashed on that one. There's the explosive serve from Belvin. Good pass from Isaac. Serrano takes a swing, and that one's wide. No kill there. Like to see Isaac's aggressiveness and serve receive there, making sure that Serrano gets a chance to get out and swing. But Belvin, he, his serving game has only continued to improve from where it was. Yeah, nice high toss, lefty, right? Not a lot of lefty servers. There are not a lot of lefties in general in the NBA. And uh, when you're a lefty jumping, serving from area five, it's got a different spin on the ball. Absolutely. There is just, he just hits the ball with a different, I mean, Gilberto Sanchez moves hands. Yeah, he's got some of the best hair I've seen today as well. And uh, he's a big, strong dude. So Matadors will need some more production out of him for sure. Vanderbeek's going to go to a float serve here. Targets the front row, O'Gorman. And that's going to be a high hand swing. Yeah, nice hang and bang by O'Gorman. I mean, the kid can jump. Pass is perfect. It's in system. Bugs could have gone to anybody and went back to Gorman. He just kind of jumps and hangs, waits to see his, op his options, and he, and he kind of chisels that one down the line off the block. See if he can take that same momentum now into the service line. Not the strongest serve attempt there. That he sort starts of with the toss. disadvantaged himself with that toss that was definitely not in his wheelhouse. Overall, Blaze doing a good job of resetting the uh, the tempo of this set, putting the pressure back onto the Matadors. Step close here from Wally. Roll shot over the top. Malera with an easy dig. And that's going to be one of those blocking errors we've harped on a little bit today. Wally not quite over the net. Funnels down the front of him with a nice swing by Isaac coming off the right side. Yeah, that was another one of those uh, poorly formed blocks where the blocker's hands aren't getting over the net. You know, we've touched on it a couple times today. Oh, there's a blocking switch actually going on right now. So the uh, I was curious what happened there. So the setter now from the Matador is going to left front. So they've got Mauro Isaac playing in right front. Step close coming from Isaac, gets reset. Serrano out. Now Molero's gonna bump set to the outside. Mauro Isaac once again. Ricky Massanet makes the defensive move. And there's the shutdown. Who made the blocking move? I couldn't Bugs, see that it. was Bugs, was the it Bugs? setter. Yeah, he got stuck in the middle and just made a great read on the play. I saw that the hitter was gonna hit that overpass and got his hands over quick for a stuff down. That's a heck of a move. And we're seeing the Matadors once again dynamically problem solved. They're identifying with the front row setter how can they get the best blocking and hitting matchups? So they make that little switch, and you saw a couple times there, they weren't sure who was going to take the next one, but clear communication worked them through, a, through that point. Bit of a bailout. It's going to be roll shot into the corner. O'Gorman handles perfectly. And the Belvin D-ball. Ball goes outside here to a D-ball to Vanderbeek, dug by O'Gorman. Back set to Belvin with a big swing, and Vanderbeek gets a touch, but that's going to be a big point from Belvin, and the emotional leader is dialed in. And that's going to take us into this uh, first technical timeout. Victoria, what are you seeing? Thanks, Nick. This is absolutely what we needed to see from Blaze, spreading their offense and making connections with the setter. One thing that both teams can work on, though, is their blocking. They're not pressing over the net, and a lot of balls are falling in between the blocker and the net. Both teams can improve on this. So hopefully we'll see that for defensive plays in this next set, or continuing this next set. And uh, yeah, continue to be aggressive at the service line and get these teams out of system. Nick? Thanks so much. And you know, 
we've definitely, I think we're going to see teams continue to uh, improve upon that as we have throughout the day. The matches kind of people start slow and they find their way. That's one of those things that's the most commonly talked about topics in uh, timeouts all the time is what are your blocking adjustments need to be in terms of location, going over early. Also, middle blockers, as the match evolves, they find out who the most common uh, sets are going to. That's where they kind of steer their conversation as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, once you get a little more familiar offensively with what the team's doing, you just got to make those smaller adjustments with your hands, getting them over the net. You know, you don't need to block the top of the antenna. You just got to get your hands sharp and over, right, and keep the ball from going past those seams. That's what you're trying to do when you're blocking. Yeah, and actually that's kind of one of the things we talked about earlier when we see, you know, a seven-foot middle with the untouchables. Blocking high is actually one of the worst things you can do because you have no control over your forearms and your biceps, your elbows. So you want to use your hands as much as possible. So instead of going high, push over the net, take away options. Great point there, Victoria. Nieves now with the float. Takes Molero, and that's going to be another ace. The third ace against the libero, Jose wow. Molero, and that is extremely uncharacteristic. It's just really challenging Molero's passing tonight. Pretty surprising. I can safely tell you that no team that has played against him that was part of their scouting report. <laughs> A little bit of a chaos spray, but Vanderbeek looks to get in system. O'Gorman handles it, and Nieves is going to bump set all the way back. You better believe Charles Belvin's taking a swing. That one goes long, but if that ball's off the ground, Belvin's ready to take a rip. Yeah, you got to love that uh, really Belvin has got just a green light to swing whenever he can get his feet to it. Especially even that one, you got Nieves bump setting all the way across court. Maybe not an ideal situation, but he just hit it. And, and look, I don't think anyone's upset that he made the error because they know he's going to come back and keep doing that. Absolutely. Sanchez now with that huge jump serve, puts the pace on it, but handled well by Wally, takes a lot off. And now Wally gets a tool off the back of the court. That is an oddity and something you rarely see when someone hits it hard enough to send it out the back of the court off the block. That's uh, some pretty good pace, so well done there by Wally. Once again, really being a rock in this serve received for the LA Blaze. Yeah, you know, that's just, again, blocking your, the blocker's hands, right? Get that hand deflection pointed back to the middle of the court. And uh, you're right, you don't see it very often where the ball goes off the block all the way out the end line, but that's just sort of the velocity that this ball is traveling at. And there's a, a forced overpass on a big serve, and we are really seeing, so, okay, hang on. When we talk 01 versus 02, break down some outsides right now. The big thing that uh, most people expect, when you hear an, outs an outside one, they're your big offensive weapon most of the time. When you think about your O2, they're the guy that's going to get a lot of these, uh, the trash sets. They're cleaning it up. They've got to make the better of a bad situation, and they need to be defensive specialists. And that is an all-star block from Charles Belvin. That ball was on the ground before the hitter or Charles himself. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Nice to see that adjustment by Blaze make a good block move, and yeah, credit Belvin all the way for that. It's Continue with your point about the 0102 system. Right, Nick. so 02 here with Travis O'Gorman being as offensive as he is, he's pretty much definition of a big 01. He wants to hit, not have to pass. And so when you really see someone like that, what a team roster really loves to see is someone like Jordan Wally that can come in, pass consistently. Every time he's getting sets, it's the out of system set. He's chipping, he's chiseling, he's hitting balls off of hands. He's getting resets and getting the big hitters like Belvin an opportunity for a big swing. That's a critical part of a team that may not be flashy, but is definitely noticed. Yeah, obviously your 0-1 is a super important player on the court. He, he's the only outside hitter that hits on the left side in serve receive and also the right side in serve receive. Okay, he's your primary passer along with your libero. Okay, the 0-2 is a real solid passer, and you need him to get his kills when he gets those swing attempts, right? Whether it's a good set or bad set, you need him to just be in the positive, right? right? If he's a zero, uh, that's not very good. You gotta have him getting points when he gets the opportunities to because he's not gonna get a ton. And there it is, you see the big serve. And there's the big swing though. Malero able to battle with that one in serve receive. Set goes back to Mauro Isaac and he buries that ball deep down the line. Good pass by Mossinette, a little bit tight, and you see a back set there. There's a big touch on that one. That's going to go the way of Charles Belvin. Hmm. Guys, uh, I'm going to tell you that simple geometry tells you pretty quick it doesn't go out the other way, 
of the court without a touch. <laughs> without there. a touch, right. Because uh, also, uh, Charles Belden was hitting that one straight down. The, we could talk about that set for a second. It was slightly spinny. Yeah. Right, but, oh, it certainly wasn't uh, pretty on the release. No. Athletic move, to say the least. Yes. Going face two net there, but uh, Blaze isn't going to complain about that one. Molera with a good pass laying out. Patrice jams it down. O'Gorman airs Belvin out, and Belvin rolls over the top. Great defensive read from Isaac. And now Serrano swings, but Nieves is there once again. Sure-handed as ever. Seals that low seam, and that's a point for the Blaze. Yeah, I had a great view of that block. His left hand got tight over the net. He sealed it off, didn't give the Matadors any kind of alleys to hit. It's a well-formed block by Nieves right there. And you want to talk about an impactful change. We went from a commanding six-point win for the Matadors. There is now a seven-point deficit on the change of only one player on either side of the match. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Nick. I mean, you can see what one player can do, the impact of what they can do into the game when they come in. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a ebb and flow back and forth. You know, when you've got a guy like, like Belvin come in, he's the emotional leader. He's going to put the team on his back and carry him. He's going to celebrate harder than anybody. He's going to play harder or as hard as anybody else on his team. And the Matadors need to re respond because the Blaze have come out, you know, on fire, you know, as like their name says. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've, they've really put the pressure back on the Matadors. And, I mean, we, when you see blocks like that from Belvin, that's the kind of stuff that starts to demoralize players, and that'll change the way you're swinging. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Can't let what another guy does get into the head. And uh, it's easier said than done, though. Yep, and now Vanderbeek goes for his swing high off the corner but a good defensive touch from Wally. He covered a lot of square footage there before that one goes down. Vanderbeek continues to put in work, going high hands, using a variety of different swings here. So a uh, little off-season uh, story for you. He was oh, actually yeah. leaving, uh, so he, was, he lives uh, a little bit further away from the gym out here, so he was looking to relocate to LA Blaze. So for the better part of the off-season, he was training with LA Blaze. As they came back, they had uh, they had to decide on some final roster positions and decided not to go with him. Hmm. He transitioned back to the Matadors less than one week ago. Oh, wow. So this is a, uh, you know, it doesn't look any different if you wouldn't know any better, but this is a bit of a grudge match for him, too. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Getting left off the roster, that's a little motivation. That's a little uh, pin board material, right, to yeah. uh, kind of get you fired up for this match. Nice little underlying info. Thanks for that, Nick. Good pass once again by O'Gorman in the back. One Yevs lays that over the top. Off blocker defense by Vanderbeek is good. Serrano resets while he steps in. That same tip comes through, and this time it's going to go down. Too deep for Vanderbeek to take on that one. That wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Kind of the back to back, back ones. Yep. With the open hand tip, and the second one finds the, uh, finds the core for the point. Yeah, and you know, we're not seeing. Uh, of the big bounce kills necessarily with Nieves, but when you're able to get some great connection established with Rodriguez, and now you're seeing Nieves still just being an option for Bugs, this is a, this is what we were hoping. Because on paper, they've also still got Greg Faulkner. He's not here this weekend coaching uh, for Cal State Northridge out in Hawaii, you know. But uh, we're going to see Faulkner return as well. So this team has some of the most established middle blockers. So when they weren't quite connecting with them back in November, it was. It was hard to understand what exactly was going on. So when we see that kind of changing in this narrative here, that's definitely going to be a big, big uh, change and boom for this team. Big gain for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've got two middles pretty much, maybe a third. You know, depth-wise, they are a little short. Greg Faulkner's been playing for a long time. He, he played last November, and uh, he, you know he's played overseas professionally. So he's he will definitely making an impact on this team for Blaze for sure. And now we're going to see that substitution I mentioned earlier. Francisco Guzman, younger brother to Pablo Guzman, comes in. I'm not sure. Uh, looks like Wally mentions kind of holding his thumb. I don't know if he might have jammed it there or something. He's got to tape it up. But uh, hopefully he's good to go. That's going to be an aggressive serve from Belvin out of the timeout. I don't know if this is just a uh, move to get some play time for Guzman at a, uh, you know, at a five-point lead. But I think that Wally's really been an important part of this. And uh, I think his passing is in a far better place than Guzman's as well from what I've seen. So maybe just a little adjustment with his hand or something. We'll keep an eye on that. But now Vanderbeek is going to be... Uh, 
A little confirmation of who is serving for the side of the Matadors. Float serve here, O'Gorman platform pass to the outside, high ball chops that over the top, Vanderbeek is ready for it. Pulled out of the net and free balled over by Molero. Bugs is gonna jam that one deep, but picked up by Mauro Isaac, and Serrano lays it short once again. Bugs back to Charles Belvin, dug by Vanderbeek, and that's gonna be over. No, he didn't touch it. Oh, he didn't touch it? Okay, thank you. I, I had a All little right. vision impairment. Had he touched it, that certainly would have been. If he had touched it, it would have been an over violation for sure, but he did I'm, not. I'm going to clear the line of sight here. And ah, uh, there you go. Good move, yeah. We're a little impeded in our visual line of sight here with some guy in a blue polo shirt. I don't know who he thinks, is it, who he thinks he is or if he thinks he's important to the match, but. Yeah, well, let's hope not. Wow, good up there by Molero. Step closed by Isaac, dug by O'Gorman. Another great dig by Vanderbeek. And Serrano swings in, gets block touch and reset. Charles finds it. Little stutter step. Once again, Vanderbeek finds another dig put over by Isaac. Once again, Inyevs. And that is that fantastic Matadors defense returning once again. Blaze able to weather the storm. Name an opposite playing better defense right now, I dare you. That was phenomenal <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah, he was on the ground several times during that rally, getting some good defensive plays for his team, elongating those rallies and giving his team another chance to score a point. Unfortunately, couldn't get it done offensively that time for the Matadors, but. More fun info for you, probably the youngest guy in the league, coming in at uh, barely 22, maybe 23. Uh, also, NCAA tennis player. Also, longest hair. I think you got that one too. <laughs> NCAA tennis player, really? Yes. Wow. So balance that between, uh, I think he picked up volleyball later in life. A lot of similar biomechanics, but uh, played at Westcliff University in Irvine for a bit. Wow. Very experienced beach and grass player. That's where you see a lot of that defense developed as well. On the tennis court? No, on the beach, uh, on the beach and grass. Yeah, tennis court. Gotcha. Oh, uh, O'Gorman with the tight pass, but that's going to be a dump there. Bugs being uh, more than willing to uh, throw that one down. I like he, I like seeing Bugs be, uh, you know, offensively involved when that pass gets up to the tape. He's not a big jump setter, but he's tall, and when he gets the opportunity to throw it down on two, you've seen him take advantage of it. Yeah, and that's. Again, we talked about it earlier. That's really one of the advantages when you've established your middle. The middles are going to be gone when you try to dump in front of you because your middle as a set option is being respected. Yeah. Good hand pass by Isaac. Quick set out, 50-50. He's able to use the outside hand there. Very disciplined outside swing move because that was a very tight ball. Right now we've got a 13 to 19. You know, Matadors are trying to find their way in and battle back here. We're gonna see uh, a little substitution in the middle through the libero. They did this last night, and that's gonna be Brett Massetti. Goes for a float. And Rodriguez swings deep, dug by Serrano. That one comes down, but recovered. Charles Belvin with a little step close into the corner. Nice play by Guzman to come into the front row. Be involved in the three-man block, then put up a hittable set in transition for Belvin to swing out of the back row. Give some credit to Guzman for making an impact through the front row this time. Absolutely, love to see that happen. Good pass, and there's the middle connection. Ricky Massonet read that like a book. O'Gorman goes out of the backside. Patrice gets a great block touch, tracked down by Malero. Zuniga goes outside, and there's the swing down the line. Mauro Isaac is just proving to be an unstoppable machine on the outside for the Matadors. Yeah, Isaac making a big impact for the Matadors right now. They're going to need a lot out of him, trying to sort of uh, counteract the, the Belvin train over here for yeah, the plays. all aboard. <laughs> Zuniga now with the float. Off the net, and there's going to, oh, missed the contact there. Belvin sets it over to reset that. Patrice passes tight. One-handed set required. That one is kept alive. 
on an insane angle, angle by Vanderbeek. Swings back into it. O'Gorman again on that big route, dug by Serrano, and that one's gonna go out of bounds. <laughs> Vanderbeek had the width of a ball. I am deadline. Yeah, on no, that, that, that was, was a, that was well played by him. I was uh, kind of chuckling at Malero as he uh, dug that kind of two-handed throw down from Rodriguez. He was actually clapping almost that entire transitional play <laughs> instead of covering. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> Close to a foot fault there, but stays clear. Isaac on the backside. There's the chop. Goes two to two. A little two-man game there between number 12 and number 14 for the Matadors, but give credit to where credit's due. It was a yeah, good I mean, pass it, yeah. and a better swing. Charles Belvin calling that one. My bad, not playing that off blocker defense over there. That was a swing I don't think anyone was expecting. Great control from Isaac. Big swing, Ricky Massanet in system. Rodriguez off the hands of Patrice. What's your take on that? Is he a little bit late there? It's tough to commit. You so. know, it's tough, but also Rodriguez is hitting the ball at such a high point. You know, he's coming down at the ball as the, as the blocker's hands go up right it's just a deflection that's just going to go in that direction right it's tough to uh that's gonna be tough to stop when you've got such a high-flying middle blocker like rodriguez makes a lot of sense that's why i just went to you as the uh resident pro there <laughs> and there's uh nicholas dennis once again getting that opportunity as a serving sub he i didn't give him a gas up speech this time so didn't quite go uh go that way but mm. still proving to be you know someone to keep an eye on Patrice, and he goes a little bit deeper. He works that deep game, short game very efficiently. Little big nice route, no rotation on that ball, and floats it into the corner. For a kill and a point. Doesn't matter how it looked. If it was ugly, it's okay, because it scores the point. <laughs> and it gets them to 23. And you know, that was something I also learned later on in my volleyball career was sometimes hitting a little bit of like a float really changes the trajectory that defenses are not ready for. Taking that off, it'll uh, you'll get some uh, unexpected results. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I agree, Nick. And uh, you know, right now, Blaze making some service errors, but when you're up with a six-point cushion, you might as well green light and just go for everything because their serve receive has been pretty solid right now. That they're in a comfortable spot to battle out. Vanderbeek now goes for that float, so he's targeting. Yep, there's the overpass. Looks for. Oh, good adjustment there. Guzman with a high ball. And O'Gorman stepped close back into that one. Yeah, well played by O'Gorman to be available in transition. So what you can kind of see Vanderbeek's uh, serve will tell you is who they're, like how they're approaching, uh, if they're serving hard or a, a target. So Guzman was the target certainly there. So he's going to that float serve, hits his target, gets almost gets the overpass, but a great adjustment there by Bugs to put a little more zhizh on it as it goes over. <laughs> a little more what? A zhizh. It's a flavor, it's a thing. Going to the back set now, and that's gonna be dug by Belvin. Bugs goes right back to him, step close, tip over the top. And that's an out of system set here from Massanet, bump set. Guzman with a big swing, wow. uses the outside hand there of Brett Massetti. And nice. that's gonna be set two. We're split now at one and one. L.A. Blaze absolutely answering back after a tough, tough loss in the first. And we said that before the match even started. Be ready to go the distance. And yeah. these teams are showing. Yeah, well, I mean, that's quite a response by Blaze in a, you know, in, to respond to the fire and the emotion that the Matadors had at the end of that first set when they won 25-19 to come back. And like you said, blame it on Belvin, right? Or give him all the credit for picking his team up once again and, and creating a sense of urgency and making some big athletic fiery plays and, mm -hmm. and pulling out a victory for his squad 25 17. so very exciting back and forth between these two squads just like we expected yeah and i think that uh you know this this blaze team was one that kind of struggled to have a bit of an identity uh when we saw them back in november yeah. and now adding such a big offensive threat in o'gorman he's lights out right now he's really proven to be a threat huge contribution for th for sure in that o2 role yeah, and you know, uh, previously we had seen Mike Velotato and Chris Cons be the setters for this team, and uh, now, you know, Charles Bell, or sorry, not Charles Belvin, but that's going to be um, uh, Marquise Bugs handling that. And you know, where sometimes he may not be as refined on his hands, 
We've now seen him better about four balls that might have gone over on overpasses. He's either aggressively dumped, found some big blocks. He's done a great job using what is a natural benefit to him. Yeah, absolutely. With the size. Yeah, stature-wise, you know, he's a, he's a big, tall setter. He can be involved and can get those high, tight sets or the overpasses. And you can't, you're right, he can either dump or he can get your, both hands over and block the overpass attempt from the other team. It's again, I just I love looking across the league anytime we dial in on a position and we've seen Derek Sullivan as a huge upgrade on the side of Southern Exposure. They get that size back very physical. I think those are the two most dump aggressive setters we've seen kind of throughout the whole league. And so it's interesting to kind of now compare. You also look Blaze and Southern Exposure, the two teams that had the biggest ground to make up after their performance in November and to see both of those guys adding, you know, they're looking to add weapons. Well, one way that many people don't talk about is toss a setter in there that's not afraid to dump, throw a ball down, get some ball touches. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been a very exciting match back and forth. Some really high-level swinging, good blocking moves. Obviously, between Vanderbeek playing some great defense and offensively doing some great work, and Belvin on the other side with Bugs, you know, running the offense. Rodriguez flying out of the middle. Some good things to see. Yeah, I think the big thing that we're, uh, we're really going to be looking for here uh, is an adjustment in the server seat. But before we dive into that, Victoria, what is, what's on your plate? Thanks, Nick. As you can see, Blaze is now spreading their offense really well. They have 30 kills on the match as compared to the Matadors' 16. One area that the Blaze can clean up, though, is their service areas. They have 12 on the match, but the Matadors only have three. And that's the stats that we have on the sideline. Back to you, Nick. Thanks so much, and that's interesting. Because right, I, right before I went to Victoria, I was going to say the one thing I think that we need to see the Matadors clean up is their serve receive. So that really becomes interesting where stats kind of tell half the story. Yes, Blaze has 12 service errors. That's a lot, six a game per average. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would love to see that compared to the, the aces and the overall effectiveness because we have seen the Matadors out of system a lot. Yeah. We've counted four errors or four aces alone against Molero, the libero. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. That's kind of the uh, the old risk it for the biscuit kind of uh, give and take of aggressive serving. They're getting results, and when you're uh, when you're winning that match by seven on the you know when you're split one and one, if you tell me that they have that many missed serves, they're making something work. Yeah, so they're doing something to make it work. Absolutely, and uh, you know I think that the Blaze have got a green light to jump serve however hard they want, right? Yeah. And they don't care who they serve because they've gotten four aces off of Malero. I mean, that never happens. Oh. Like, we've never seen that before. So, you know, uh, guys like Rodriguez, like maybe O'Gorman, let's make our first serve and then turn it up from there. Where a couple of the other guys, you know, Belvin obviously, he's got a green light. And so does, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking right now. But uh, yeah. uh, Belvin Nieves, he's got a green light as well. And you're going to see Guzman stay in. And, you know, we're seeing Wally with a green light as well, but looks like he might be... Uh, working on something there on the bench, and, and Guzman's going to continue to play for the Blaze. And now we're going to see that middle blocker. This is so interesting. I don't know why they're doing these subs to start the game. I've never – I've seen this before when there's an accident, but never twice in a row. Yeah. So uh, Brett Massetti sure. is going to be coming in here for uh, Sanchez. That's Gilberto Sanchez. That's, that's a weird, weird strategy. I'm not too sure what the payoff is on that one. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it pays off for him. And there's the tip over the top, picked up by Massanet. O'Gorman step close. Vanderbeek ready for that one. And now we're going back to uh, a back row attack, though. Ah, Back row attack yeah. violation. Uh, but we are seeing now the, uh, the setter switch. So we're going back to Serrano. Oh, OK. Interesting. So they've uh, opted to switch Serrano back in for uh, Zuniga there. Interesting uh, interesting strategy there by the Matadors. I'm not too sure if I uh, fully approve of it, but we'll see as this, may, as this game goes along. I can tell you I, I think it is a good switch. Yeah. I think the connection. I think that Zuniga was playing great volleyball. Uh, I just think the connection with some of these hitters and what they maybe need to do to make some changes positively, I think that's kind of one of those tough ones as a player when you're playing well, but the system might need a little bit of uh, an adjustment. Yeah. Ooh. Great swing off of the hands of Patrice there. Also, I think there's a little bit more size on his block. Yeah. Maybe not in stature, but uh, very, very vertically, uh, you know, gifted or he just gets up well. Yeah, absolutely.
Guzman going for that jump. Puts good pace on it. Nice pass by Serrano. Out to Isaac. And that's exactly what you want to see. And there's that clean set delivery from pin to pin off of his back foot all the way out to Isaac. And any way that you can get Isaac completely involved in this game, you need his offensive output to match that of Belvin. Yeah, absolutely. You're right, Nick. Uh, someone on the, on the Matadors has got to match Belvin offensively. And uh, it, it's either going to be Isaac or Vanderbeek. Oh, Gorman tries to go OT. And the double block of Vanderbeek and Patrice is there to shut that one down. Victoria, what do you, what do you got to follow up on that one with? <laughs> Well, with the previous play, I just want to shout out Charles, number 27, for Blaze. If the Matadors want a chance to block this kid, they need to be up and pressed over the net before he contacts the ball because he jumps and swings so fast. So they need to press over the net like they're blocking a middle attack. Nick? Absolutely. You definitely do not want to chase him. But, man, it feels like both of these teams now, uh, they took a little bit of their pump-up juice yeah. in between games, and we got big swings coming out here. Yeah, well, the game three is always one of the most important games. You know, it's basically a, a race to two out of three now at this point. And so uh, whoever can win the third game really gets put into the driver's seat throughout the rest of this match. There's that one-handed flare from Serrano. Gets him in system. Big swing out. That's the kind of playmaking last night that we were seeing where he's going to make aggressive plays to give his guys an opportunity to extend the rally and make the mistake happen around them. Well handled also by Isaac to keep that one in. Yep, Because it absolutely. wasn't exactly an ideal set, but it definitely didn't go over the net. Right. Nice serve. Ricky Massanet, perfect cushion offset from Belvin, but he chops it down the line. Mulero puts it on the net, and there is the heads up play. Was that Patrice or Serrano that came across? I couldn't see, but one of the Matadors players in transition, I think it might have been Serrano, able to add a little bit more with the knuckle and throw that one down. Nice dig by Malero. That's what we've been waiting to see. Yeah, nice dig by Malero and a good heads up play to get that over on two. Score the quick point when you're able to. Isaac misses on that one, but he put a lot of pressure in with that service run, so they'll be happy to end one point up now as Belvin, uh, Belvin's going to be putting pressure that they're happy to have a one-point lead on. Likely going to go cross-court, target the front row Serrano, see if he can hit that five or five-six seam. Ops for the float now, goes off speed. Front row middle takes the pass, Vanderbeek high. Oh, Gorman goes back into that low seam, and once again, double trouble for the double block of Vanderbeek and Patrice twice in a row. Yeah, those two guys have got O'Gorman's number right now, and that's uh, two straight blocks right there. O'Gorman could use a little bit more space maybe in terms of uh, ball off the net to give him a little bit more uh, wider angles for him to hit that cross-court uh, seam. Patrice goes short there. Traditionally done a very good job of working the long, short game, and it uh, pushes guys deeper into the court and then brings them forward, so he kind of keeps the serve-receive guessing a bit. Goes a little too too short on that one. O'Gorman with that aggressive toss, well handled by Molero. Vanderbeek goes up, and once again, this man cannot be stopped. Yeah, they're having a hard time trying to figure out the riddle that is uh, number 17, Vanderbeek. He's uh, swinging freely. He's making some great blocking moves, playing great defense, keeping his serves in from the end line. Really contributing nicely for the Matadors. Great pass from O'Gorman goes outside and that's tipped over the top and there's that defense we're talking about from Vanderbeek. Serrano gathers and chips that one down the line, dug by Belvin. Set to the outside, Guzman tries to take a big swing and we are seeing the middle blockers absolutely put in work right now on the side of the Matadors. A small personnel change to see number two, Brett Massetti come in and the man shuts down the low seam. Yeah, the blocking for the Matadors has really stepped it up in this game so far, you know, early on in set number three. That's like the third or fourth terminal block that the Matadors have been able to score on uh, L.A. Blaze. And I want to go back right now. Victoria Dennis, two, match, or two sets ago, said, hey, I want to see both of these teams upgrade their blocking moves. Matadors must have been listening in on the live stream because they are doing it here now, and it is paying off in leaps and bounds as they take a three-point lead into this first technical timeout. 
Love seeing when the uh, the on-air team knows what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we're guessing. Sometimes, Sometimes uh, we got a little birdie, yeah. you know? Extra set of eyes never hurts. Right now, uh, one thing we haven't seen from Blaze that I, I would confidently say will activate very quickly to get O'Gorman back in the game, watch for him on a quick pick route. Yeah. Very well get established. Him from the back row, absolutely. You do have a Rodriguez in the front row. So a good pass, look for maybe a little bit of a, a push or a float, kind of a front slide maybe, not a front slide, but you know that drift push yep. set from Bugs, create that space for Rodriguez to really get up big and, uh, and attack at a high point. Now Vanderbeek has uh, gone back to that float, might be targeting the front row Guzman, but he also goes down, there it is, he goes down the line. Oh, nice pass by Massonet. There it is, Rodriguez. From our angle, I thought he was going after O'Gorman's platform. Instead, he hits the one guy you don't want to yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, that was not a good serve by Vanderbeek to find the libero Massonet and the, Blaze make him pay. The red jersey gets the eye of the bull there, and the Matador serves straight at him. Yep. Big serve goes short. There's the off speed. Rodriguez opened up with an ace early on in the match. Had a little bit of service issues right after, but now he's able to dial that one back in. Hits an off speed in front of the back row, Isaac. Seven, eight now, Blaze looking to answer back nicely out of that technical timeout. Coach Eddie Zhao definitely not wasting an opportunity to get the guys moving in the right direction. Isaac answers that back nicely, and there's that offensive prowess that we're seeing with that setter adjustment now with Serrano comes in with that left-handed dump. Yeah, nice left-handed dump. I feel like uh, Belvin sort of saw that develop, and he kind of came into the court, but he stopped himself from fully committing, or else I think he could have got, got that ball back up in the air. Got that little read. He's got that good, uh, that good intuition, but now Serrano is ready to go for power alley on the uh, jump serve. Nice pass by Massanet. <laughs> Outside of the arm dig there by Malero. Serrano stepped close, dug by O'Gorman in the back row. Massanet goes back to Charles, and Vanderbeek with another huge dig. Serrano gonna take an aggressive swing here, love to see it. Back to the middle, low, but that one goes out. Oh, unfortunate turn of events there for Blaze. Just sort of a misconnection between Bugs and Nieves. But yes, you're right, Nick Vanderbeek continuing to just lay it all out on the line defensively for his team. It's another diving dig to keep that ball in play. And it also, pays off. That started with a dig from Malero's outside wrist. <laughs> Backside to Belvin, step close on the D ball. High ball out. And it's going to be bumped, oh, oh. bumped into the net. Too cute, try to be too cute on that one. Blaze need to find a little momentum themselves now, okay? They're kind of, you know, the Matadors have come out of this, come out of the gates in set three and kind of started throwing some punches. The Blaze are a little bit back on their heels right now. And uh, they're gonna find something and manufacture a few points here. We're seeing the, uh, the serve receive changed up a little bit for both of these teams. Um, you know, Matadors are really dialed in right now, and I think since we've seen Wally go out, that level has dropped a bit for the side of Blaze. So the, the tables are turning a little bit. You kind of talk about that seesaw that goes back and forth. Well, it's not a lack or a, a downturn in, in ability or, or no. volleyball being played by the Blaze. It's just maybe a little bit of our best passer went out. We don't really, you know, we're kind of spinning a little bit. Yeah. And we got to find a counter a counterbalance. And there's a triple block that is swung over on the outside there by Isaac. This guy is really starting to make a name for himself as a new name here in the NVA. I know during the uh, live stream last night, he was definitely a fan favorite on the YouTube. A well-established name, I think, in Mexico already, and certainly no surprise why. Offensively, is pretty explosive, that's for sure. Francisco Guzman has been having some uh, some very consistent and solid jump serves here. Always a nice addition when you've got someone that can hit something with pace and 
do it with uh, good consistency. Good pass from Molero. Jacked it back to Vanderbeek. Dug by Bugs, and now it's going to be bumped across court outside. Belvin gets his turn, and finally a ball that cannot be dug by Vanderbeek. And a ball stuck in the rafters. That one gets... Uh, the gym gets that one. Yeah, the gym gets that one. That, one's got, that one got stuck up there, but... I was talking about really fast about Belvin's attacking in transition from the from the right side of the court. Yeah. So he's a lefty, mm -hmm. okay, lefty opposite. Huge advantage to be a left-handed opposite. You get a set like that that's out of system from anybody. Really, all he's got to do is just step close to it, and he can put some good wood behind it and really drive that ball cross court as a lefty. You know, his window's really big. He's a high jumper, and he can really get on the ball fast. Yeah, it naturally opens up a lot of the angle for him. So if you're not being a disciplined blocker, it's something that he can take advantage of very handily. And there's a nice high line swing. Not trying to do anything too fancy, but those that's the thing that every coach tries to teach their player, knowing when and how to swing deep. You know, even if they get the block touch there, it's a nice recycle. Certainly not going to be a terminal one. Mm -hmm. That's a great look from Isaac. Good pass by Guzman. O'Gorman on an inside oh. route. And uh, that was a nice, you know, you're talking about bringing it outside, and there's that, wow. rounds that circle and goes <laughs> after the front row off blocker. Isaac almost dug the ball, though. Yeah. I mean, he sat right in there, put yep. his helmet on, and that ball came up, just, you know, ricocheted behind the, behind the bench for the Matadors, but that was nearly a great dig. And now we're tied back up at 12s. Neither team willing to give an inch. Tough float to miss there. We're this close. You know, the technical timeouts sort of add another race element you always talk about when you get you want to race to 20 or when you're in that fifth set, it's a race to five, race to 10, race to 15. The, the technical timeouts kind of add a nice little at eight points that you're running there. And right now it's who can get to 16 on their own terms. O'Gorman swings, nice block touch, reset. There's that swing that you're talking about with the uh, lefty Charles Belvin opens that up, makes it work. Yeah, Belvin with a nice turn down the line that time uh, in transition after a second chance opportunity. And like to see him create a little bit of a run now from the inline. I think the Blaze could really benefit from a couple of points, you know, from his serve here. Goes for the short float. So uh, in terms of talking about uh, decision making there, so in that rotation, the strategy with that fl short float, you've got uh, Vanderbeek trapped on the net, and then you've got the middle in front right. So they're looking to drop it short, add another serve receiver into that, and really create a lot of confusion. Yeah, kind of call it serving it into the stack, right? You yeah. got Vanderbeek in the middle and another setter stacked over to the right side of the court. Obviously, it's a good strategy, but you know the execution's got to be on point, yeah. right? or else it's uh, all for nothing. O'Gorman with, uh, with a good serve that's going to go trailing just wide right. And traditionally, when you uh, see jump servers line up, they opt to line up op opposite of where they tend to serve to give them uh, enough room to miss on sidelines as well as, you know, allow for some more length deep depth-wise on their serve. Just misses that one off the side of his hand. Nice pass by Massanet. And there's the Rodriguez cutback once again. Right now, uh, we need to see adjustment, I think, you know, he might go over the top of you, but I think they're still taking away that power swing, thumb down. Malero is back there. You want to funnel him. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right, Nick. I think it's, uh, you know, a guy like Rodriguez, he's such an athletic middle hitter, right? He can see the whole court. And if I'm him, I'm not trying to go risk the way to hit towards Malero. I want to go cross body because yeah. I know that's not where Malero is in the court on defense. Serrano goes to Serrano, dug by Rodriguez. That's going to be a tough ball that just cannot be brought back. A little overzealous that time, trying to get it all the way up for a hittable set. Unfortunately, it's not returnable for the Blaze. And uh, the Matadors win that race to 16 that you were talking to a couple points ago. Yeah, and I mean, ever since that tied up at 12-12, and maybe before that, but it, I can remember at 12-12, we have been trading points back and forth. So Matadors right now with that one-point lead, uh, I'm trying to think who their next server is going to be. I think it's going to be Martin Patrice. No, he just missed uh, short. Can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how they react to this timeout. 
because we've had kind of a lull of missed serves so right on both teams. And so right now, if you're able to come back out, find a consistent, good, aggressive serve, you can restart the tempo on your side, maybe earn a real point that uh, isn't happening because a lot of serve receive is finding that natural tendency. You kind of get in your rhythm. And so three, four missed serves in a row, you know, if you hadn't passed the ball already in a couple rotations, someone might not have passed the ball now in five, six minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it really throws a, a little ripple into the uh, into the momentum of the game, right? right. In the flow, miss serve after miss serve after miss serve. You know, it does affect more than just the service game and the scoreboard, but also offensively speaking and passing as well. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll see now. It's oh, Serrano. This is going to be a great opportunity. Big jump serve. See if he can put some pressure on the LA Blaze out of this uh, technical timeout. O'Gorman's oh, ready for it though, and goes for the big. That's what we talked about. Reestablish him as a hitter, get him back in the game. There's the big route we had not yet seen, and finds that back line from the Matadors. Yeah, if I'm O'Gorman right now, I'm realizing that my O1's on the bench. He's you know dealing with maybe some kind of injury or something like that, and uh, I need to step up my game a little bit and be a little bit more of a contributor. As, as opposed to you know when my starting 0-1 is on the floor with me. So whether it's from the inline or a big attack out of the back row like that, or Gorman's got to be you know, more involved. Massanet finds a... Uh, <laughs> Did Nieves grab that? Yeah. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> a natural uh, prankster always looking to get some smiles and laughs. He and Belvin are total clowns. <laughs> I knew if it wasn't Yevs, I knew it was Belvin because they're both, you know, same page from the book. Goes backside against the grain there. Nice dig once again from Vanderbeek. A little pineapple punch dig by Massanet. Belvin over his head, step close, and not able to connect with that one. That's not the time to try to get that swing. Okay, that one came over his shoulder. Oh, Belvin, Belvin's on the left side, so his outside arm is his hitting arm. That's as hard of an angle as you that can try to should, hit. I mean, I appreciate the effort, but that one's just real. That's just a poor choice. It should have just been kept as a free ball and keep it in play for your team. Throw that to the back corner, make the left side play some defense. Yeah. Massetti getting a great run going here. Makes a good defensive read as well. But that's going to be LA Blaze finding a way to end that run. Still right in it here, just down one point. Big thing is uh, right now, both these teams, it's exhausting to play at the level. This is a great level of play. They've got to find ways to be energetic, keep themselves rolling, keep the guys going. Good pass from Isaac. There's a quick connection, a little low there from Patrice. Ooh. That's the offensive capability that bringing in Serrano brings to that roster. The step close, right-handed swing, and jacks that ball up into the middle of the court. Oh, wow, that was a nice quick arm attack for the setter to be involved and take care of that business right there. Kind of taking out the trash a little bit. Yeah, and I talked about earlier about some of the guys that like to dump. <laughs> Serrano's not a big dumper, but he loves to take some step close yeah, yeah. swings. Yep. Mossinet with a nice pass. Back to Charles and once again goes into that angle. You said the importance of a lefty hitting on the right side and he just has angle, angle, more angle and then- uh, And an arm cannon too. I yep. mean, you have to hit that ball hard. Yeah, because he, he's more than comfortable, too, if you watch the pattern of his arm swing. He'll hit the ball outside of his body to add even more, you know, inside approach for him. And it really works well. Good pass by Isaac. Vanderbeek rolls that down the line, forces a deep cover ball. Belvin tries to roll that one over the top, touch on the block, reset. Now Belvin's <laughs> more than happy to take a swing. Wow. Fantastic self-cover, nice bump set there from the back row outside Guzman, and Charles does not tip twice. Yeah, nice ping pong play though, ready to be ready and cover your hitters. Okay, get a second opportunity, swing for a point, takes full advantage of it. Deadlocked at 19. 19 Nick. all, yep. So we're gonna see the stack served right now. Ooh, he goes away from the, uh, the screen. Oh, Gorman one on one. Pretty big take for O'Gorman in that seam as a blocker there, but just yeah. a better swing from Isaac. He just sort of floated past the body of the hitter that time. Probably needed to close it off, force him to hit line, you know, change his hitting pattern. Something we haven't really seen a lot today is that adjustment to make that hitter swing line when they want to hit cross court. Very true as well. Now we'll see uh, if Isaac can continue that pressure. Gets a nice bounce. I Rodriguez puts it up. 
O'Gorman able to beat that triple block there. That's a, a nice return to form after getting a couple low seam balls blocked back into him. So that's going to be a nice point for the Blaze, and they're going to tie that one back up at 20 apiece. Belvin with the float, taken by Isaac. Serrano uses high hands, dug by Massanet. And now Belvin goes for that swing, just missing the inside hand. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just at that one sort of out of system play is really kind of the only weakness that Belvin has, right? How to adjust decision making maybe. When do I swing at it? When do I just put it over? Okay, that's two points now late in this third set that have cost the Blaze based off of uh, Belvin's choices. Yep. Rodriguez tips over the top, draws the uh, draws the net there from Serrano. I am liking that we're seeing the Matadors continue to push doubles and triple blocks though across the way. You know, nets never something you want to see, but you know Serrano stepping in trying to help out block that middle. It's a good move. Yeah, if you can get three blockers in front of that hitter, that's a great advantage for you. Twenty-one all. This has been one and two point runs the entire game. No one willing to give it up. Great pass by Malero, set back to Vanderbeek, and he goes into that deep line. A great recognition by Serrano that he's got the mismatch of Guzman versus Vanderbeek. A solid four to five inches in height there, and definitely taken advantage of. Yeah, great swing attack line there by Vanderbeek to go high down the line into the corner. Goes to that float, targeting Massanet. Rodriguez tips over the top once again. Malero ready for it. And there's the bick now from Isaac. That one is being prepared for on the side of the blaze. And that's a Rodriguez Bugs double block able to shut that one down. Here's that Nick Liz Dennis service uh, substitution coming in once again for Rodriguez. And at 22-22, this is where you see what guys are made of because this is uh, really one of those moments where you got to be ready to go. Brings in also, though, a nice, I mean, bringing in kind of a, a, essentially their second libero. He's their backup libero, so. Yeah, no, you know, he's, he knows his role. Just, just misses. misses. Yeah, just missed. And now Serrano able to put the pressure right back on at 23-22. A real point here is going to put the Matadors in a pretty controlling spot to finish this one off. Big serve. Massanet nails. Guzman gets the reset. No under that the uh, Matador is looking for. There's the controlled swing from Belvin. All the way outside to Isaac, and he swings into that hard angle. There's a drift that we're talking about once again. Looked like Bugs uh, kind of kept going there, and that leaves an open seam, goes right into the middle of the court. Yeah, a little bit of uh, just a little body control, you know, knowing your hitter's tendencies, where you want to line up your block versus their attack line. Okay, I mean, uh, first of all, blockers have to be shoulder to shoulder. You can't, you know, leave the seam cross court for the hitter to be open to, but then you can't also float past, if you're the wing blocker, float past the outside hitter and land outside the court because your momentum's taking you that way. Right? Yeah, and that's one of those things we were talking about earlier where, you know, we saw um, that was uh, Gianluca Grasso with on Tyrants this morning, took a big swing, uh, put, took a big elbow to the eye. And that's unfortunately one of those things that blocking actually is where you see the most physical contact in this non-contact sport is yeah. the middles in order to close that gap very frequently are running into the pins and that's kind of just the way it goes. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, it's, this is a physical game. These guys are playing at a really high level. A set point here for the Matadors, but there is an occasional couple of bumps and bruises and elbows being thrown around. O'Gorman oh, answers with the bick. Serrano with a nice dig and Vanderbeek's turn on the D ball, hits the high hands and he's gonna take that game. Wow. Man, Vanderbeek coming in big for the Matadors, defensively, offensively, in pretty much every facet of the game, really being a huge contributor to the home team here. To say that it's personal is an understatement now, and you can <laughs> definitely see that coming out for uh, Vanderbeek really dialed in here. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's not letting the ball hit the floor. His defense is on point, right? Yeah. Almost like a, a blonde version of Malero back there <laughs> in, a, in a red jersey. But then offensively, I'm sure he's hitting at a pretty high clip. I can't think of uh, too many errors that he's made offensively. Um, and then from the inline, 
he's not scoring a lot of points, but he's putting the serve in, and he's allowing his team to play defense We're from it. We're seeing him serve a lot. Yes, yes, he's going on service runs, and that's that's affecting the scoreboard as well not in to terms mention, of the Matadors. In the middle of that whole set right there, we saw him and Patrice work to get back-to-back -back double blocks on O'Gorman, and that right there kind of rattling one of the weapons that Blaze has been relying on. It's forcing offensive changes. Yeah, you know, it was another sort of uh, back and forth game. I think it was 25-19. It might have been closer. It might have been 25-22. I, I think it was 25-22, if think, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was, too. And so, um, you know, really close game all the way around. If you're the Blaze, I think right now, Nick, you know, um, Bugs has got to find some connection with Nieves in the middle, yep. right? Um, but they're reeling a little bit. With having Wally out, I mean, he's... Uh, he's I'm warming sure. up over there. I'm not too sure what the deal is, but it's almost like he pulled himself out, kind of. Which and, is so uh, bizarre because I thought he was playing great volleyball. Yeah, I mean, his team clearly needs him. You know, Guzman is doing a good job filling in that role, but, you know, there's just some limitations there that, uh, you know, is causing some issues for the Blaze as they kind of navigate through this match. You know, defense is really one of those intangibles. You see players, and again, I keep saying the name, John Luca Grasso is one of the best defensive outsides in the league. And so when you substitute him out, you can remove all the stats in the book, but to determine if someone is going to get a dig is something that you cannot quantify. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're seeing Wally regularly. I'm talking about how many digs he was getting. And that's just something that extends those rallies. And when you have a game that you lose by two or three points, those digs can be all the difference in the world. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. But this SoCal showdown to end our Saturday night is absolutely delivering. That's great, great primetime volleyball on a Saturday night. Victoria, on this exciting finale for the night, what do you got for us? It's definitely about perseverance and longevity for both of these teams. They're going point for point here, big attack swings on both sides. Defense wins championships at the end of the day. Both of the Sliberos are making huge digs and keeping the ball alive. We'll see how it, how the match will close out, given the fact that this is a close-knit game. And when you hit 2020, you have to minimize your errors, and you definitely have to go for those big swings. And it comes down to who can dig to convert in the last five points. Back to you, Nick. Thanks so much. And we talk a little bit about the liberos there. And I think one of the interesting things is it looked like at the end of the match there, the Matadors might have been targeting Massanet. They hit him four or five times in a row. I don't know if that was intended or they wanted the location that he happened to be in serve receive there. Yeah, but, uh, hard to say what the strategy is right there to purposely serve the libero, whose number one job description is to pass nails every single time. And, uh, you know, Malero was a little bit rough to start. He's he cleaned it up. Yep. He's doing a lot better. But Massanet's, <laughs> there was no ramp up period. He's been on one the entire match. It's quite it's quite the dichotomy here between the liberos for both teams, all right? Malero in yellow, five foot four. You know, looks like he enjoys eating good meals. You know, he's not uh, he's not starving, that's for yeah. sure. And then you look over at Massanet, you know, he looks to be about five six, maybe eighty five pounds, you know, soaking wet right out of the shower. But uh, and and probably I'd say ten to fifteen years younger than Malero, maybe. Is th that's just a guess. Yeah, but, I have no uh, idea, but there you go. It's just, it, it, you're right, it's such an interesting picture. Both of it going about their own ways, but both of them absolutely really good. define two, fun liberos to two watch. Two absolutely great liberos, maybe two of the best liberos in the NBA. Just a fun comparison to see a guy who looks like he's 12 playing against a guy who's probably been playing for longer than Massanet's been and alive, and uh, makes for a fun, a fun sort of comparison. Yeah, and it really just... Uh, I think it speaks to both of them. When you talk about enjoying watching a libero play, that's something that's so rarely said or thought about, but really speaks to how good they are. Wally's back in here now, and we're gonna see what they're able to do with that. Massanet with a great reception. Malero tracks this one down. Step close with a huge angle. Mauro Isaac is given a ball, and he takes the ball. That was. You know, no, the block didn't get over the net, but you he know, didn't get everything perfect. I feel with, like, Isaac, we didn't say his name a lot in the second half of that third set, but I would expect big things from him in the fourth if uh, the Matadors want to win this match in four games. Yeah, and, uh, you know, to win this in four would be an absolute banger for the Matadors. Wow, great serve. That is one of the most difficult balls to get up and serve receive. The off-speed cut, cross-court, 
from zone one to zone one because there's just such a weird trajectory for that to take. So that's a tough one, but a great serve by Serrano nonetheless. Yeah, Wally's also got Nieves coming across in front of him too, during right through that service line. And there's Wally returning in form. What a swing from O'Gorman with a true four to four swing right there. But you love to see that adjustment from Wally. A right. tough first ball, comes back, dials it in right away. Yeah. Team is in system. And you like to see that kill by uh, O'Gorman as well to get him involved too throughout the you know fourth set here as well. A couple of things we were questioning what, what had happened. The O'Gorman offense front row, that passing from Wally. Here they both are right back in it, ready to play and see if they can extend this one to a five point or a five set match. You have some aggressive float. Huge reach over there, and that one's going to be an aggressive block touch shutdown by Rodriguez in the middle. Yeah, Rodriguez getting one of his uh, few blocks he's had in this match offensively has been a big factor, but defensively with his blocking, I don't recall getting seeing him get a lot of blocks, and so nice to see him get a little one-on-one -on -one action against the Matador's middle as well. Tough ball put up oh. there. Oh my gosh. A little bit of a dangerous kick dig from uh, Malero trying to extend the rally there. I'm glad that did not result in contact. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that would have been ugly. We just missed each other there. Great float serve. And once again, the, one of the worst spots you can pass if you're an outside is pass to that front row zone four because no one is rarely there to uh, help that one out. So that's just kind of a big hole on the court. Good hand pass by Isaac, and he gets this set. Ooh. And there goes the aggressive swing into the angle. This is really just seeing uh, O'Gorman and Isaac going back and forth on who can hit more angle. I think a little adjustment on the defense was intended there that O'Gorman was shifting back into that spot. Yeah, so they, just didn't uh, get deep enough off the net and uh, possibly could have gotten a, a hand on that swing. Wally back in, perfect pass. Rodriguez goes deep. We are right now seeing exactly what we were wondering what happened. Wally back into the serve receive. We're no longer just managing. Wally's hanging that ball up, letting them get involved, and now we're seeing Jonathan Rodriguez, two kills already out of the four points scored here for the Blaze. Yeah, you know, the Blaze need to respond from that third set victory, you know, that the Matadors got. They try to force us to a fifth game, so they're gonna have to play hard and try some different things here. There's Patrice coming over the top, but that's the good defensive move, that crossing, you know, you see uh, Wally and uh, Massanet going after it there. But once again, Martin Patrice just showcasing that he really is the Matador's offensive middle, doing a great job there. Yeah, absolutely right, Nick. Quick set to the backside, a little inside there, good block touch, covered by Belvin. A backside to O'Gorman once again, chops over. And that one's gonna just get an unlucky bounce off the tape that the Matadors were not ready for. Can't see what their blocking scheme looked like, but that one looks like it went right through the low seam. Yeah, a little uh, help from the net, it looked like, a little help from the equipment. Guys are laying out for the balls. You know, this is a, this is a money-making kind of game right now. It's a lot on the line, bragging rights, right? Home court advantage, protect your home, you know? And uh, we're seeing some, some good high-level volleyball tonight. Absolutely the case here. Now Gorman trying to go back and just put a little bit more pressure. See if he can extend this lead more than one point. No ceiling clipped there. There's the step close. Massanet digs it down the line. O'Gorman's turn to hit it out of the bick and swings wide on that one. Great dig by Massanet. I would like to have seen a front row setter or a front row hitter take advantage of maybe getting a set right there in transition instead of the back row. Yep. But uh, again, easy to criticize from the sideline. You know, we're not on the, f on the court, we're not wearing a jersey, but uh, set your front row hitters in transition. Yep, and that's gonna be a little bit of a shank pass there from Wally, but Blaze is ready to take care of it. A Little bit of an aggressive uh, swing coming under, everyone's okay. Vanderbeek more than happy to uh, chatter a little bit about it to some former, uh, you know, temporary teammates. Battle of the ponytails there. <laughs> a 
Mastanet with a perfect pass. Going back to Rodriguez, he's untouchable. He really is. I mean, the kid can fly. You know, we've seen a lot of athletic dudes today, but Rodriguez, he is on another level when it's compared to the other middle blockers in this league. And uh, he hits the ball at a very high point. If he could do the same from the inline, it would make him just that much more dangerous. And better yet, Mastanet walking off the court, puts his hands up saying, why are they still serving me? <laughs> Backside to Vanderbeek, tips that one over the top. You know, that's one of those things that I, I really see some of these successful guys, that's the common ground, at least in the SoCal world, uh, at least on the LA side. Uh, I know for Blaze, Travis O'Gorman, Charles Belvin, Bugs, these guys are at open gyms, even when they're not doing NBA practice, they're there all the time. Same thing can be said for Vanderbeek. And that's where you see guys that know how to problem solve through a variety of solutions because they've seen it all, whether they're hitting off of a great setter, whether they're playing against good, bad, they're playing yeah. co-ed, grass, beach. They're, they're getting all the reps. Right. Yeah. They're getting all the reps in all the different situations, and they're seeing different, you know, looks, and they're, being, they're, they're storing that, and they're, mm -hmm. they can go back to it. It's almost like you're making a deposit at yeah. the bank, right? When you get into those situations, you, you, you can reflect back on them and remember what you did or what you needed to change in order for, you know, to get the, the outcome that you want. Yeah, and that's the little things that I really encourage the young fans out there, that they want to grow their game, they want to get better. Things to be looking at is really just watch one point and see how many small things you can pick up on the athletes are doing. Right there on that last one, we have a front row seat that if you watch the eyes of Vanderbeek, as he goes up to swing, his arm says he's going to go hit that ball. He sees the block commitment from Wally and knows that he has a chance to tip over the top. He makes an adjustment mid-swing, opens up the tip there, and it just completely throws off the entire, you know, the entire Blaze defense. Yep. Also, recognizing that he's got a back row middle. There's no Massanet there behind that block. So all these different little things contribute to what makes a great player great. And we're seeing Vanderbeek just really impact this game as a result of all that experience. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Nick. Patrice gonna work that short long. Goes deep with this one. Belvin looks for that adjustment, finds that one in. He's had a couple missed swings. They're going to look for him to heat right back up. Yeah, they're going to need some more production out of Belvin. He kind of, you know, we didn't say his name much there at the end of that third set. So look for him to uh, get his number called quite a bit as we get closer to the, you know, end of this fourth set. Goes for the float serve instead of his jump serve there. Vanderbeek once again. Hey, we said it again. I want to keep throwing it back to Victoria. At the very beginning of the match, what did she say? They need the block line. And what did I say? Vandry Beek's swing is straight down the line. <laughs> Four kills in a row going down the line deep. We haven't seen that adjustment stick true. Blaze needs to get back out wide. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Just, it's all about setting up your block to the hitter's tendencies. Huge nice dig, dig there. Malero's going to bump set that outside. Step close from Vander Beek. Swings over. There's a triple block. Not over the net. Saying that a lot today. Blockers not getting their hands over the net. They're paying the price for it at bad times like that. It was a huge real point for the Matadors in transition. Isaac laying out into the deep corner makes a phenomenal read on defense. Good pass by Wally. Give him an opportunity. Belvin has to track that one down. Free ball it in. Mulero goes right back to the outside. And that one gets over the net. Clean up that slop. You get over, jam yep. it back into the head of Serrano. Good block by Bugs over there. He stopped short. He got over the net, didn't float past the hitter. He's able to get over the net and penetrate for a block. Still uh, some room for Blaze to uh, continue whittling away at this two-point lead from the Matadors while he goes back to his jump serve. And you see that, uh, you know, a set and a half off kind of... Uh, cooling him down there he's gonna have to find a way to warm that one back up pretty quick yeah he was back there you know doing the foam roller he was peppering you know moving around during the timeouts and things but that's a little bit different when you get thrown in you got to make some serves and make an impact here in the fourth set Serrano with a nice off speed there's Wally with that good pass though O'Gorman gets a double ricochet and it resets see if they can find what they're looking for and there's a dump from Bugs nice Bugs oh that is such in a, that's that same aggressive look we're talking about and honestly since he's not been connecting with Nieves as well I think that's a great way to kind of get through that rotation you get Rodriguez back out on the court yeah 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, Nieves, his presence on the court is very much needed. Yes. Unfortunately, that his production, you know, and his connection with Bugs, his production blocking wise, you know, he's not the big flashy player like Rodriguez is, but he's a. He, you can tell he's got great presence on the court for his team. Serrano with a disciplined bump set back, and there is why we wanted to see Rodriguez back on the court. One on one gets over and shuts down an attempted overpass swing by Serrano. Yeah, nice one-on-one -on -one solo block by Rodriguez, just getting his hands wide and over, shutting down those alleys, giving the point to his team, 10 serving 11. Some real points here for Blaze, helping close that, that uh, two-point lead. Nice pass by Molero, outside to Isaac. Big swing dug by Belvin with a one-handed swing. Rodriguez lays it up and O'Gorman chops the off-speed, dug by the off-blocker. Vanderbeek goes once again, there are not enough blockers in the world to stop the man with the golden ponytail. <laughs> Rodriguez made a nice move, but you could tell what his downfall was when he landed. He was facing the standing ref with his shoulders. So he oh. created that seam and gave Vanderbeek a chance to hit it off of his forearm for the point. Brett Massetti with a nice float. Good block touch. There's that pineapple attempt read by O'Gorman. And once again, but that's going to be read as well by Vanderbeek. The setter dump battle going on here. Back to Rodriguez, and there it is. Finally, Patrice makes a full commit block move. Goes right the same, the same direction he's been going the whole time, but able to get it, fully commits, gets over the net, sends that one into the deep corner. Yeah, great block by Patrice. I'm not sure if it was a commit, you know, being in transition. Rodriguez was a little bit off the net but a good read nonetheless, whether or not it was a commit or a read, just a nicely formed block by, the, by Patrice in the middle. Very, very crucial point there. The fact that they're gonna bring them to a three point lead at 13-10. Right now, the Matadors feel like they are just rolling right along. And you know, right now the pins between uh, Isaac and uh, Vanderbeek feel untouchable. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, they've done a great job controlling their emotions, but then really celebrating their success. And then they're able to kind of steamroll a couple additional points when they make a great play. A couple plays back, a ping pong back and forth, a couple yeah. guys that got it over, ended up with another pancake or a block, you know, for a point. And it's contagious, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing that from the Matadors right now. Effort begets effort. You know, one guy willing to do it turns into two, turns into six. Yeah. Easy for the bench to be, to be rowdy and ball, mm -hmm. things like that. And yep. It's strolling right along here. Good pass by Rodriguez. They look to get him involved. Tip that's going to go down. Not quite red. A little miscommunication about which off blocker needs to grab that one. Either way, uh, you know, we're seeing the swing slowed down. Tips are a lot easier to dig than a Jonathan Rodriguez deep court swing. So... Not a bad spot to be in. But now pressure on Bugs to see if he can generate a little bit of momentum on the side of Blaze with his jump serve here. And no momentum generated. Hopefully not negative momentum. Yeah. Blaze got to find some uh, energy from the end line right now. It's a very, you know, very important part of the game. They cannot start missing their serves if they want to win this set and go to game five. Serrano floats that one in. Wally with a good pass. Belvin with a high swing dug by Malero, and that's going to be a net. That was a nice dig by Malero. Unfortunate net violation there by Patrice. Patrice yeah. yeah. Gorman with that aggressive toss. Can't be missing two, three, four serves in a row here. Yeah, the back-to-back -back service errors is just not going to help the cause. 15-12, there is an open door still, absolutely, for Blaze to fight back into this one. But they want to start making some moves yeah, to get I mean, that it's, momentum rolling. It's long from over, but uh, they have to put the pressure on the Matadors from the end line. Great pass from O'Gorman, but that's going to be a solo option. Wally overruns that oh. and finds the placement in the corner. Deep into the corner. They call it the coffin corner, you know, and uh, he's able to hit it. I don't think he meant to hit it there, but uh, score the point that way nonetheless. Kind of take what he can get. Yeah, at this point, man. Talk about using all the court over there. 
We're pushing nine o'clock now. These guys are getting tired regardless of play and they're just still working through it. There's the huge Bick attack. Moro Isaac. If you didn't know who he was already, consider this your notice. <laughs> yeah, he's been a, a highly impactful player for the Matadors. I know you said it last night as well, but really carrying a heavy, heavy offensive load for his squad. And uh, look for them to continue riding him here as they, you know, 16, 13, getting pretty close, you know, first yeah. team to 20. Uh, could make some, you know, good advances here to finish up this match in four. It's pretty hard not to compare the Matadors we see now to the Matadors we saw just five short months ago. What a world of difference. Yeah. And, you know, for as many personnel changes as there may or may not have been, they still have a core of three or four guys that are the same. We're still seeing Patrice, Molero, Serrano, uh, outside, uh, sorry, number 13. So Carlos Serrano was uh, still on the team, but not really playing. Uh -huh. Vanderbeek splitting that 6-2 uh, time yep. when they did that double sub. Some of these key players coming back and are just absolutely handling critical parts of that roster. Yeah, absolutely. Victoria, what are you seeing on your end? Thanks, Nick. If LA Blaze wants to take this set from the Matadors, they have to stop Vanderbeek. He's four for four this set alone, batting 100 right now with a block included. Their defense should adjust to him right now, and they should know that the ball is probably going to go to him. Nick? Um, are, are, you, uh, are you a mind reader, or <laughs> did, you, did you plan that with him? Because uh, four for four just became five for five. Jacob Vanderbeek scoring his sixth point of the set. That's as good as they come. Well done, Victoria. That's a nice real point there from Patrice. Seventeen, fourteen here. Belvin's got some uh, some room to wiggle, but he's got to make a move, and we really want to see him make this serve. He goes for the float. Nice pass by Isaac, and there's the backside. Finally, a stop against Vanderbeek. Massenet goes out to Belvin. Belvin, the high flying on the right side. Wow, aggressive swing. Wow, a little out of system play though. <laughs> From there, I don't think Bugs was going to set Belvin, but Massenet stepped in and said, "Here you go." And uh, a hard, aggressive hit down the line by Belvin and a primal scream to let everybody know <laughs> he's still involved here. Once again, this is talking about that serve management we've harping on all day. Right now he knows that uh, the jump serve isn't worth it. Once that float hits his targets, that one goes over the net and it's gonna be Massanet airing this out to Wally. And w Ooh, I thought that one was out, but that's gonna be a great block touch. And once again, Vanderbeek is having the match of his life right now. Yeah, he really cannot do anything wrong. I mean, he's offensively a huge factor. He's making blocks, he's digging balls on defense. He's making his serves. And uh, I, I could tell that one wasn't in because it wasn't being dug by Vanderbeek. <laughs> yeah, he's got a pretty con Pretty good control of where he is on the court, and we're gonna see a substitution here for the Blaze. And that's gonna be uh, Liz Dennis coming in for Wally. So Liz Dennis also played some outside there. I think this is truly just an offensive or defensive adjustment. They're looking for getting as much serve receive as they can on the court. They wanna get the middles involved. But there's the Matador defense ringing true. Oh, no. oh line him up. Cue him up for an all-star highlight reel. <laughs> Bugs isn't waiting for the overpass to uh, set up an offense. He is the offense. And that's the situation for Malero. Just hit it high and deep. Make him use the whole court. Don't just lob it over. You can see Bugs is standing right there. Gets the full advantage of the overpass. There's the serve Liz Dennis was looking for. He's going to track this one down, and Massanet's going to free ball over. Malero takes it, puts them back in system. Serrano swings offset, tipped over the top. Belvin not able to find that. Lots of effort from Blaze, but there is just too much scrap to compete with right now on the side of the Matadors. Yeah, Matadors first to 20 here. Blaze have got a little uphill battle, down by four. Staring at a four set loss potentially here on Saturday night.
big jump serve here. That one's going to go out. But again, I, I, you know, timing, whatever, there's a million things to say. When I look back at the serving pressure Serrano has applied throughout the match, he has been integral in the run. So if he's going to miss one, sometimes that's just going to happen. Now can he get back into serve receive, take care of this float serve from Pedro Nieves. Malero gets it. Ooh. And there's the big swing out of Isaac. Once again, line blocker just not getting it done out there. Bugs, he just can't close off that line. And Isaac just takes full advantage of that matchup. Oh, we're seeing something exciting here. So what we're going to see is uh, there's a, a setter subbing in. So that means Serrano is probably going to be hitting front row. So I think they're going back to a three-hitter offense here with um, Zuniga probably setting. Potentially not. It looks like that uh, Zuniga went to left back. But that's what Matadors has been known for, is using their setters. Serrano very, very regularly was left in to hit last year. And you and I can never quite figure out when they win or why. Their rhyme or reason, but it yeah. happened on multiple occasions. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I like the strategy, but unfortunately the execution just didn't come together right there. Bugs with a top spin. Good pass. Vanderbeek goes for a slide route. Dug out the back of the court, and there's going to be Liz Dennis free balling a ball over. Mm. And the aggressive step close set from Serrano pulls a blocker, and then he gives a one on one opportunity for Patrice, opening up a great offensive opportunity there, all because of his aggressive approach to set that ball. Yeah, he almost kind of takes uh, the blockers up with him. He it's did. a little bit of a uh, you know bait and, and uh, bait and set the quick kind of thing, and uh, you know that's a great strategy. Very athletic play. And when you've seen Patrice putting as much work as he has, you know, in it's going to work out well. There's the great pass from Liz Dennis they were looking for from Blaze. O'Gorman goes off speed, good control, but the uh, the Blaze fire in terms of aggression on the pins has cooled down a little bit. Yeah. And uh, those big swings we saw early on are, you know, few and far between now. They're still ready to make a move, though, if they act right now. Great serve from O'Gorman, but Isaac cannot be rattled. Oh. And there's a big swing over the top oh. in Vanderbeek off the chest of O'Gorman. The authority right there, that was a nicely. I would love to hear if Vanderbeek is on track to uh, potentially break 25 points alone at the end of this one. Be curious to see how that's going because he is absolutely having a night. Yes, he is. But what's crazy is Mauro Isaac is rivaling him kill for kill. <laughs> yeah. Liz Dennis with a great pass. O'Gorman with the bick. I, you know, I really do like what Blaze is doing, though. They've identified the problem. They said we need more passing. Put Liz Dennis in. They've essentially got two liberos on the court. Yeah. And if that allows them to run O'Gorman on the bick, O'Gorman is that offensive that they can maybe take away a front row outside option to connect between their middles, that big route, and Charles Belvin. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Nick. Uh, you know, the passing has definitely gotten better. You've seen O'Gorman now coming out of the back row a little bit more. He saw him swing on the right side of the court. So he's taken a little bit more of that load that we saw that we said he needed to take on. I think it was in game two or three. Um, he's starting to do it now. Hopefully it's just not, you know. Not too late. Not too late. High ball back set. Van Der Beek. Just cannot stop him. You can't stop him. If you can even sort of justify <laughs> setting it on his half of the court, get out of the way, he's on his way for a terminal swing. <sighs> Timeout called by Blaze. Oh my gosh. Match point, Matadors. I mean, he's setting a bit of a precedent for himself here. I mean, this is, look, this is a heck of a, a great a performance. Heck of a match. Yeah, absolutely. Great performance by Vanderbeek. But Isaac as well in a supporting role. I mean, look, it's been a really well rounded game by all of the Matadors. Both Serranos, oh, no. Malero has made a great contribution from the Libero Patrice position. Anchoring and Patrice anchoring it down yeah. in the middle. We saw some great block touches when Brent Massetti came in. 
started shoring things up and extending some rallies that they were getting hit holes through. And you you're, know? you're seeing constant pressure from the inline. You're not, they're not giving points away. You know, we heard that stat earlier from Victoria. You know, we weren't worried about the 12 missed serves early on, but now it's proven to be more of an issue. There's O'Gorman answering back out of the timeout. Back against the wall, he's your go-to hitter. That speaks volumes for the confidence that Bugs has there in that big route with O'Gorman. Yeah, match point number two for the Matadors now. Belvin back to serve. Not really sure what we're going to get we're, here oh, we're on that jump serve. serve. I can guarantee it. He just uh, lined up. He looked at the ceiling. Oh, no. He had it. I wanted to see the oh, jump serve. Oh, he doesn't set Vanderbeek inside out. Transition, you got to go to him. Game, set, match. Oh. For the first hitting error of the set. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. His first hitting error of the match comes at a match point. Vanderbeek's hitting percentage suffers a little bit. How does Belvin react with his serve attempt now? What's his target? Goes right back to the hands of Isaac. And there it is. Massanet sells out for that one. Bump set across Bugs. to uh, Belvin and Vanderbeek playing the defense there. Sets over, reset. Mulero's going to bump set out to Serrano. Swings deep, dug by Massanet off the ceiling. Bugs find it, step close from O'Gorman. Molero in system as always, back set, and Vanderbeek swings deep. O'Gorman takes that with his hands. Quick pick set, back, oh. pancake off set. Vanderbeek pokes into the corner. Charles Belvin swings deep, finds that one. He, oh, they call it long. Wow, what a rally to finish that match. Unbelievable. Ooh, that delivered on every front. Wow. Significant upgrades for both of these teams, I think. Really yeah, great wow. pieces. Really well, man. well played match by both teams. Matadors just really a clean match. Vanderbeek, player of the match by far. Great supporting roles by Isaac. Like we said, all the Serranos. Great, great volleyball being played. God, we had some great matches today, but it is hard to go home anything less than ecstatic as a volleyball fan because that delivered on all fronts. Yeah, that was a terrific match. Perfect way to end the day. That was our fifth match. We're going on 13 hours in the gym. Constant volleyball. <laughs> terrific. You know, congratulations to the Matadors and their coaching staff for putting together a really strong match strategy. Yeah. Congratulations to Vanderbeek, clearly the player of the match. Getting a little bit of revenge against his former Squad, yeah, no, I mean that was a full team. that was a full off season of training and, uh, and uh, yeah, really uh, really high level match to finish off day number two here. And I mean, I it's hard to really speak to it. It just that was such a satisfying end to it all. But now we're gonna get to hear from the legend himself, Victoria, with Vanderbeek on the sideline. Take it away. What a game by you! Twelve kills, five blocks. What great momentum your team had beating LA Blaze. They're not an easy team to beat. I mean, you guys, your hitting percentage looked the same across the board. What made the difference for you? Uh, honestly, that loss yesterday, I think, just fired us up. Uh, we needed that first win, and as a team, we came together collectively. Absolutely. Your serving was a little bit more consistent than the Blaze. Was that a key to win this game? Uh, yes, uh, we tried to serve tougher than yesterday, especially, and we were getting them out of system, and we were getting the blocks and uh, passing their down balls to convert. It seemed like every time you got set, you were getting a kill. What is your mental game like on the court? Uh, I came in today with a goal in mind, and in my own head, I had that goal, and I guess I surpassed my own goal, so that makes me feel great. Great, and the people, the fans need to know, what kind of conditioner do you use? <laughs> Full natural, buy it on Amazon. <laughs> you, heard it, you heard it here first, folks. Back to you, Nick. Oh, getting the <laughs> most important questions right there. The man with the great hair. We're getting the details, fans, so make sure to check that out. That's going to do it for us. But we're going to be back here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. as the Texas Tyrants take on the Utah Stingers. And if you tuned into those matches today, we saw a... A Texas Tyrants team that was really fired up took a huge win against the OC Stunners and uh, a, a Stingers roster that actually showed a potential weakness in a rough afternoon for Romero on the outside 
So if uh, Tim Johnson, number 17 tomorrow, is able to have a big day, there might be a little mismatch that we see uh, the Tyrants really take it to the, the, the Stingers. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see that matchup tomorrow. You know, you're the defending champions from Salt Lake City, sort of the upstart Tyrants now and their new personnel. It'll be an exciting way to uh, kind of start that day as we work through it. Well, we'll see you guys back here at 9 a.m. Make sure to tune in if you're a fan of the Storm or want to see the Texas Tyrants take it to them. We will see you guys there for the final day of this event.